It's time for the excitement of NCAA Division II football, featuring the Shepherd Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's play-by-play coverage is brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Mary's Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremations, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm. Standing by is our TV10 broadcast team. So let's head to the field and get today's pregame show underway. Good afternoon and welcome to Adamson Stadium on the campus of Cal University. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, as we welcome you to California, Pennsylvania, as the Cal U Vulcans get ready to take on the Shepherd University Rams. Rams, this is Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Travis, uh, unfortunately, we had some technical issues, so we didn't get our pregame in, but it's good to be here and just, uh, I guess, get us your keys to the game brought to you by uh, Miller Auto. Sounds good. For the Vulcans, very simple. They want to try to establish the run. That's something that the Rams have struggled stopping so far, giving up six touchdowns on the ground in the first two games of the season. You have Cal Vulcans. They're coming off of a big win last week versus Cutsdown. They weren't able to play their first game of the season against Alderson Broadus. It was canceled due to rain, so their first game was a dramatic come-behind win for, for Cutsdown. Well, against Cutsdown, I should say. And then that game, they were able to score three touchdowns on the ground. So if they're able to establish that run early, it's going to bode well for them as well. Also, looking over on the defensive side for the Vulcans, they have a lot of size in the secondary. So if those guys are able to get in there and really impose their will in the run game and break up some of those passes, that's going to be a huge benefit for that Vulcans' chances as far as getting a win today. You look over for Shepard, they got to continue what they've been able to do, protect the quarterback, establish that run early on. That's going to set up that play-action pass for Seth Morgan. Seth Morgan has been very accurate so far this season and only seems to be getting more and more comfortable with this offense. You look on the defensive side of the ball for the Shepherd Rams. They've had some difficulties trying to get something established, but they've had a bend but don't break mentality so far this year. But I think that they're going to have to come up with some big plays tonight, excuse me, this afternoon versus the Cal Vulcans because they have a lot of talent on that side of the ball for Cal PA. So the Rams defense really going to have to step up and really make some plays today in today's contest. Our keys to the game brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. Nick Verzellini and Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. Dylan Bishop, our on-site producer slash cameraman, and also our cameraman tonight or this afternoon, Daryl Miller. Colin McLaughlin back in the studio. Shout-out Colin and our boss, Mike Hornby, for helping us get on the air this afternoon. We had some technical difficulties back in the studio, but we are ready to rock now, Travis. Cal in these black jerseys kind of look like the Atlanta Falcons black jerseys with the red and white. Of course, Shepard in the away. White uniforms, the blue numbers, blue letters, and blue pants. This is a big PSAC matchup early in the season. This will really, I think, tell us how far Shepard can go this year. This is an elite program in Cal. Typically one of the better teams in the PSAC West, and Shepard has found ways to win games but haven't come against usually top-level competition. So we'll learn a lot about this Shepard team as the kick is away. And fielding it for the Rams is Malachi Brown, and Brown is stopped at around the 16-yard line. Coming up and making that tackle is Matt Toby, the linebacker. And it'll be first and 10 for Shepard. From their own 19-yard line, Brown coming off of that 100-yard kickoff return day where he had the special teams player of the week in the PSAC East. That's something else that's going to be huge for the Shepard Rams team is can they continue that trend of having big plays on special teams? They've been able to get two touchdowns so far this year, one on a punt return in game one, one on a kick return in game two. So let's see if they're able to continue to make plays with special teams because right now they're going to need points wherever they can get them. We mentioned Matt Toby, one of the better players you're going to find in the PSAC. He's been named second team all PSAC West for the past couple of seasons, 2021 and 22. 
They'll hand it off to Brown running off the right side, and Brown finds some room, gets it out toward the 25-yard line. Our opening kickoff was brought to you by CMA Honda of Winchester, located at 3985 Valley Pike. CMA moving lives forward. It will be second down and four for the Rams after the six-yard pickup to the 25. John Hutchinson and on the stop, the six-foot one, 210-pound junior, was in the game versus Shepard last year. That was a close contest. The Rams were able to come out 26 to 23 in that game. Hutchinson was able to get a fumble recovery. Morgan looking to throw on second down and throws to the far side for Cornell Bat, and it's caught in stride across midfield and finally thrown down. They're on the 45 yard line. Making the tackle on that play was Rashawn Murray, the corner. And that brings up a first and 10 for Shepard into Cal territory to the 45. And when Shepard is going to the vertical passing game this year, that's how they've been able to have success. Not so much just bombing it over the top, but showing back shoulder fades or underthrowing it and allowing those wide receivers to use their athleticism to go up and get it in traffic. Morgan will run up the middle, and Brown doesn't find much room. Brown the ball Big number 98 or 99, Gage Hill in on that tackle. Second down for the Rams. Gain of a yard, second down and nine. It'll be second and nine after the one-yard pickup. Dorner to the far side now. Batten and Taylor, the receivers to the near for the Shepherd, on second down here in this first quarter. Morgan takes the snap, throws to the far side, complete to Dorner, who heads out of bounds just short of the first down. Make marker will be about third and two for Shepard. That's going to be interesting to see if this Rams offense can get Jeremiah Taylor and Cameron Dorner out there going at the same time. They've kind of alternated big games here so far early on this season. If they can get both of those guys rolling in the same game, particularly today against a quality PSAC opponent, it's going to be huge for the Shepherd Rams. Third down and about two from the 36-yard line. Coming up on 13 minutes to go in the opening quarter, Shepherd on its first drive. They'll hand it off to Brown. He's got a big hole off the right side and has space. Inside the 25 goes Malachi Brown before he's brought down on the play by Jacob Siegel, the safety. It's a first and 10 for Shepard. Siegel coming off of a big game last week. Had nine tackles, two of those solo. First significant action this year for Siegel. Played 11 games last year, seven starts. Was still able to be very active in that secondary. First and 10 from the 23 of Cal. Brown this time is stopped in the backfield. And it looked like there might have been a miscommunication in the backfield that time because Seth Morgan was waiting a little bit too long for Malachi Brown to get the ball, so maybe miscommunication as far as the snap count, or maybe Brown was just set up a little bit too deep in the backfield, but that was just too slow developing of a play, and those outside linebackers for this Vulcans defense are very active. We have Ibrahim Sanago and also Josh Miller. They're very active coming in off the edge. That was Miller on that play coming up to make the tackle. Looked like Fisher might have jumped, but it's a pass complete to Cordell Batten, and he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard. No flags on the play as it's a 20 Seven-yard touchdown pass from Seth Morgan to Cordell Batten, the freshman, his first touchdown as a Ram. The Rams caught him off guard, going tempo on that play. Miscommunication in the secondary. Looked like they were trying to play a cover, too. The corner was sitting down too short, and the safety didn't do a good enough job getting over the top. And in that little gap, Seth Morgan was able to deliver an accurate pass for the first score of the game. 11.25 to go in the first quarter, and the kick is up and good. 7-0 Shepard on top here in this first quarter. We will be back in 30 seconds after this. Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. We welcome you back to Cal, Pennsylvania. 
California, Pennsylvania. Nick Verzellini alongside me is Travis Smith. Travis, great opening drive for the Rams, able to get that first touchdown on the board. Cordell Batten with the score for the Rams, and Travis, uh, the opening drives have been pretty good. That's all right. you, you, you took my thought right there because we talked about that last week up at Edinburgh when Shepard's able to come out in the first half and the second half. When they have that first script, they've been able to execute efficiently, and it was no different on that previous drive. Again, Seth Morgan throwing some accurate balls. The Rams also using that run game. It's going to help set up that play action pass. It's going to make things that much easier for your quarterback to hit wide open targets. And again, Seth Morgan, very savvy quarterback, was able to recognize that that safety wasn't able to get over the top, and he was able to squeeze it into that window in between the corner and that safety for that first touchdown. So right now, Seth Morgan getting off to the start that this Rams offense hoped that he would have. Shepard able to take the 7-0 lead on the touchdown drive of seven plays, 81 yards, taking 335 off the clock. Cal will come out throwing black throws complete to the near side. Caught by Omari Hopkins for a short gain. Our first, our scoring drive summaries brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th district. It will bring up second down and about six after the four-yard pickup. The Vulcans just trying to loosen up the box a little bit for the Rams. Know that they have been able to fly to the ball early in the games during for the run. Black throws oh. and nearly intercepted by Omari Terry. It's through his hands and incomplete. We'll bring up a third and six for this typically run-heavy Cal team. Davis Black. And it may be something where they've... First-year starter, 6'5", 230-pound junior, Eric McCann has been... Their guy the last two years in that backfield, 5'10", 210 in the backfield currently for the Vulcans. Was named all PSAC West second team last season. Had a good year. Had average 4.2 yards a carry. Had 11 touchdowns. So certainly has a nose for the end zone. It's Isaiah Cameron. Black looking to throw down the far side and incomplete. He wanted his wide receiver, Omari Hopkins, again. And it'll be fourth down, and the Vulcans will be for forced to punt. Good defense that time by McDowell on the back end. Wide receiver wanted a little bit of pass interference on that one, but again, we've noticed that these PSAC officials, they will let those wide receivers and corners go out a little bit before they decide to step in. And if the defensive back is making a play on the football, chances are the referees aren't going to call it. A rare huddle on a punt for fourth down at six. So you got to be aware here, but I would think in your own territory you're going to kick it away, and they do, probably just to get the right protection in. It's a line drive kick and fielded on the run by Miles Greer. Greer across the 40, cuts it back toward the middle before he is Returned hit hard Miles on the play Greer. and brought down by Dominic Suleiman, the defensive back. So it'll be great field position for Shepard and Travis. This is something I touched on this week on the sports mix. With the way Cal typically plays, they already came out throwing. In the past, Shepard has been able to get that early 14-0 lead and change your game plan completely. Cal came out throwing, which was a little different for them already, and now if they go up 14, you feel like they can really throw them off as we have a legal block in the back. That will hurt Shepard a little bit, but overall... Still good field position here for the Rams and a great opportunity. And that's an excellent point. You come out, you know what your strength is. Play to your strength. Your running game came up huge for you last week. You look at the numbers that McCann was able to put up against a very tough Cutstown defense. 13 carries, 97 yards, averaging 7.5 yards per carry, two touchdowns. Put the ball in his hands, and good things are going to happen. Maybe they wanted to use their first drive to try to break some keys that they know that Shepard was really going to try to lock in on, but... Sometimes when you try to get a little bit too smart, you wind up outsmarting yourself. You want to get back into this game, you got to stick with your bread and butter type of plays, and the Vulcans weren't able to do that on that first offensive drive. A lot of pressure on this defense here for the second drive. Morgan throws to Taylor complete, just short of the first down marker. will bring up second down about three. Our first quarter presented to you on TV10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. To give him eight on that one. Yeah, Taylor able to make that catch. The corner in coverage, Tayon Lobin, 
was giving him a big cushion on that play after getting burned deep. He realized that these corners are going to make some adjustments and give these wide receivers a little bit more respect. Throw to Taylor over the middle complete. Taylor right at the first down marker. Flag comes flying in from the secondary. It's a late flag and away from the action, so I'm curious to see what the penalty is going to be. I'm thinking it may be offensive pass interference. I did see the official on the near side here pointing toward the Cal defense, so we'll just have to wait and see. Could be a holding on the defense as they are now uh, huddling, which is never really a great sign. <laughs> Usually means they might change it completely. Pass interference. Offense. That's what I figured. They did that play-action pass, and the outside wide receiver wanting to run off the defense. Got a little bit too hyper, got a little bit too handsy with the defensive back, and good call that time by the referees. Again, the referees really don't want to get too involved when it comes to pass interference, but on a play like that, they, they kind of forced the referee's hand where the wide receiver initiated the contact to create that space for Taylor to get underneath. I believe the official said it was 15, but Shepard doesn't have an offensive 15 that I'm aware of at least. So... Probably just a wrong number there. Is it'll be second and long now. I'm sorry, still a first down. Just go backwards. Or yeah, second down. Okay. So two penalties already to start this drive for Shepard. Second and 17 for the Rams as they did flip the marker over there. And Morgan steps up, pumps once, throws high and incomplete. He wanted Cam Dorner over the middle. Luckily, there was no back safety. In the middle of the field. It was a dangerous throw. You you pump it like that, and then you really wasn't able to step into that throw, just tried to just muscle it in there, and the ball wound up sailing on him. So when you throw a high pass over the middle, usually going to be a bad result. Either your wide receiver is going to get smoked, or you're going to possibly get turnovers. We'll see what Shepard does here on a third and 17, backed up in their own territory. Most teams probably run, but the Rams seem to be letting Morgan rip it today, and he will throw on third and long. Morgan pumps once, looks to the near sideline for Jeremiah Taylor. He leaps up, makes the catch, and has the first down. Holding. Soldier guards, we got a flag on the play. Flag back at the 10-yard line will most likely bring this back as it was a huge play for Shepard, but the holding call does bring it back. Just the whole timing of that play was thrown off. Seth Morgan had to hold on to that ball a little bit longer than he wanted to. And a lot of times when the play's off schedule, you're going to get penalties like that. And this drive has just been derailed by penalties so far for the Rams. But the Rams have shown so far this year, they've had a lot of success throwing those comebacks, those back shoulders on the sideline, just something where the wide receiver is able to make an adjustment in the air. So Seth Morgan, he doesn't have the arm strength where he's going to bomb it over the top. But that's fine. You work with what you got. And and his strength is being able to throw it up and allow his wide receivers to make plays. And the Rams have had a lot of success so far this season with wide receivers able to come back, adjust to the ball in the air, and make a catch, and make something happen after the catch. But they're really going to need it here on this drive. Third and 25, Shepard will just run the ball with Brown. And Brown nearly made it exciting, got some nice moves in the middle of the field, but then is brought down. Looks like leading the charge for the Vulcans. Down by Jacob Siegel. Bring up several players in there. Hutchinson right. as well. These will be fourth and long. And Hutchinson, this is his first year getting some significant minutes for the Vulcans defense. He appeared in 11 games last year. He had two starts, but very active. He had 26 tackles, 10 of those solo, three and a half tackles for loss, and a sack and a half. So he has been very active, even in a limited role. Short punt here. Willis has it across the 40. And Willis is out of bounds in the Rams' territory of the 45. It'll be first and 10 Vulcans. Or 35 or so, about when he got pushed out, though, was the 39. So great field position now for Cal Travis. And we'll see if they get back to their bread and butter, the the running mentality. I mean, the way Edinburgh gashed Shepard for long runs, you would think this Cal team would try to establish that early, but they came out with three pass attempts on their first series. Edinburgh, Southern Connecticut State also had some big runs right up the middle. You have one of the better running backs in the PSAC. Give him the ball. Potentially could be dealing with an injury as Williams is the back here on first and ten. He now moves to the left of Black and will get the carry, and Williams is stacked up. Dwayne Grantham leading the charge, maybe even lost a yard on that play. 
Williams the ball carrier. Williams, a much different running back from McCann. Like we mentioned, McCann, 5'10", 210 pounds. He's a banger. Devontae Williams, a little bit more of your scat back, but he is a senior, 5'8", 175 pounds. Last year appeared in 10 games, two starts. Still averaged 5.2 yards a carry and had four touchdowns. Also had 11 catches for 77 yards out of the backfield. Loss of one on the play officially, so it'll be second and 11 for the Vulcans from the Shepard 40-yard line. Black in the gun, looking to throw. Throws near side complete. Pushed out of bounds by Pena. Falling in that catch for the Vulcans is Martin. Demonte Martin, the 6'5", 195-pound junior. You certainly look across this roster in the skill positions, wide receiver, defensive backs. The Vulcans, you know what they're looking for when they're going out to recruit high schoolers. They want big, tall guys. Nothing wrong with that. Like we mentioned, 6'5", 195 pounds for Martin. Had three catches last week for 49 yards. Looks like McCann is in here on a third and short. Black in the pistol. No, that is still Williams as they'll run with Black, and he dives across for the first down. First down. And Black will run the ball, but most of the time it's in a situation like that where it's going to be short yardage or down close to the goal line. He's a big fella, 6'5", 230-pound junior transfer, came over from the University of Charleston. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Vulcans at the 28-yard line. 6.42 to go in this first quarter, 7-0 Shepard. Williams gets it in the backfield, and he is stopped again. Shepard's defense so far doing a good job. Pena along with Grantham. And Aguilar, I believe, was in on that one as well. Good job by that front line of Shepard. I feel like the Rams are still trying to figure out who's going to be those rotational guys, the guys like Journey Dunbar that that fill a role and play well on the interior when you are rotating as it will be second and long for Black in the offense. will complete to Martin on the screen pass. Martin lost the ball, and Shepard dives on top of it at around the 15-yard line. Coming out with the football is J.T. Komayao, and the Rams' defense forces their first turnover of the season and will take over on their own 16. Great time to get that first turnover, Travis. Absolutely. That's something that the defense has been lacking so far this year is that ability to force turnovers. You look back in years past, yeah, they may have given up yards and points, but they were able to come up with those crucial turnovers, and you give that offense an extra possession, that's just something that's going to put the advantage even more on the sidelines for the Shepherd University Rams. Six minutes to go in this first quarter for the Rams, first down and 10. From their own 16, Morgan in the gun, looking to throw again. A lot of passes here early in the game. Morgan throws high and incomplete, intended for Cordell Dadden. Pass is incomplete. What do you think, Travis? Maybe trying to get that balance again. It seems like this team hasn't really found its identity yet and a consistent balance offensively. It's either all or the other. It's either all run or all pass. you got to find a nice little happy spot in between where the run game and the passing game can complement one another. It's not going to be the team of last year where you can draw back and throw the ball 45 times and expect to win. It's, the team's not built that way. They're not going to have sustained success playing like that. They'll run Russell this time, and Russell doesn't find too much room. Russell Maybe a gain of carrier. one or two on the halfback stretch. On the stop. Looks like Julian LaVenture in on the tackle. Gain of a yard. It's third Third and nine for Shepard from its own 17-yard line. As we roll the 532 and counting in this first quarter, 7-0 Rams. Morgan in the gun again on a third and nine. Shepard being forced to throw. Morgan stands in, completes to Dorner. Dorner gets out toward Good the tackle. 20. And he is well short of the first down marker. It will be fourth down. Siegel coming up to make the tackle, as well as Matt Toby, the linebacker. And that will bring up the fourth down, and Shepard will be forced to punt. So, again, playing out very much like last week did. The, the first drive looked flawless. Then after that, they, they kind of lose their way. 
you try to you, if the first drive worked that well, go right back to it. Make them make the adjustment. You don't make an adjustment to them. Barrick gets a high punt this time, and fair caught all the way back at the 32-yard line by Hopkins. It's a much better result for Shepard on the punt, and you know, Cal's got to be pretty frustrated. They were driving into the red zone, and then they fumbled the football away, giving the ball back to Shepard. Even though Shepard didn't do anything with it, they at least flipped the field here, and it's still good f- field position for Cal, but a better situation for the Rams. Absolutely. You figure on that last drive, the Vulcans able to s- set up shop in Rams territory to begin that drive. That turnover just killed the momentum, and right now now they're looking like they're going to go with a bit more of a heavy set with two upbacks in. Still don't see McCann as a new running back out there, Bobby, Bobby Boyd, the ju- or I'm sorry, the freshman. Bobby Boyd, Boyd Jr., the 5'8", 175-pounder. That always trips you up, right, when they're a junior, but they're not a junior. You mean the junior freshman? Yes, the junior freshman. (laughs) They even have a guy named Junior, Junior McConaughey, but he is a junior. (laughs) So that one works out. Junior, junior. Junior, junior. Junior, the junior. Second down at about six after the four-yard pickup. Willis going in motion. They'll run a little jet sweep with the quick pass, and it's a first down for Cal. Tackled on the play by O'Neal. That's a nice play. And maybe that's something. I mean, at this point, we figured that McCann, I see him on the sidelines. He just hasn't got in the game, so maybe not be an injury. It might be something as as far as, as as like, disciplinary reasons where he's not in. So we'll see if there is something happens after the first quarter or maybe he checks into the game, but this offense is really geared towards his running style, so they're kind of out of their element when they're having to bring in the smaller scat backs into the backfield. Boyd's the back here on first and ten. High snap, they'll give it to Boyd here on the right side. He's got a huge hole. Ooh, big stiff arm. stiff arm. Inside the 40-yard line and finally brought down around the 36. Boyd, a big run, tackled on the play by Shepard's D lineman, Forbes. Mike Forbes coming up to make that tackle is a little bit of a change in that Shepard front. Nathan Muley, who was typically at a D tackle spot, has now moved to D end. That's partially due to Malik Holloway not being eligible at the last moment this season. So Shepard's had to move some things around. You got Bednarski, Baxter on that interior, Kowser, and Muley off the edge. First down and 10, and here's a run to the left side with Williams. He doesn't find too much room, but big run from Boyd. I had to put that down as my uh, (laughs) first nominee for collision of the game just with the stiff arm. You don't expect that much coming from a 5'8", 175-pound front, but he certainly punches above his weight as demonstrated there on that salty stiff arm. He looks a bit more stocky than you, how you would imagine 5'8", 175. Maybe it's just the double-digit number. It's it's, it's packed in there. (laughs) Second down in about six. And they'll look to throw here. Black throws complete. And another fumble. Anilio Pena comes up with the football. Shepard forcing another turnover coming into this game without any. And the tight end trying to make his case to the referees. Jack Kalechi was the intended target. Was not able to bring it in. From the yeah, I thought for certain that was a drop, but maybe it never hit the ground, which would result in an interception. Definitely a close play. I don't think it could be a fumble in that scenario, but Shepard will take it, and, of course, this isn't the postseason, so there will be no review. There you go. Get that offense out on the field immediately and run the next play. Don't give them a chance to think about it. So back-to-back drives for the Cal Vulcans. Stalling out in Shepard territory with turnovers. Morgan will hand it off here. Running hard is Malachi Brown, but he is brought down on the play by the outside linebacker, Josh Miller. Short gain will be second down about nine for the Rams. 
And you're starting to see Malachi Brown is starting to pick up some of the nuance of playing that running back position, like we mentioned early on this season, converting from wide receiver. So he certainly brings that skill set as far as catching the ball out of the backfield. Now he needs to be able to develop that skill set as far as running in between the tackles. That's a necessary component for this Rams offense. And so far, Malachi Brown has shown flashes here and there, but he's got to get the game to slow down a little bit more where he's able to see those holes, plant his feet in the ground, make that jump cut, and get to open space. Play action pass here in the near side, complete to Cam Dorner. He's out of bounds with about a minute to go in the first quarter. 7-0, Shepard on top after the opening drive touchdown to Cordell Batten. Tough throw that time by Seth Morgan to the near sideline. Had some pressure in his face, but still able to get the ball over the outstretched hands of the defense and hit his wide receiver on target, setting up a third and medium. Third down and four after the five-yard pickup. Clock is rolling now, under 45 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Shepard has just eight on the play clock. And Morgan takes the snap. Morgan throws over the middle, bobbled and caught by Batten. He makes a move. I'm sorry, that's Dorner. And Dorner in the, or across the 45-yard line before he's brought down. That's the second week in a row for Cam Dorner had a bobbled catch over the middle, and it results in a big play for Shepard, another first down. That may be the final play of this first quarter. It's about 10 seconds to go. Our other first quarter sponsor here on TV10, the Skinner Law Firm, accident and injury lawyers representing accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com. That will do it for the first quarter. We will take a 60-second break. Our score, Shepard 7, Cal nothing. As we head to the second, this is Shepard Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We welcome you back here to California, Pennsylvania. Our score seven nothing. Shepard on top. Cal, or I'm sorry, the Rams driving here to begin this second quarter. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. Back in the studio, Colin McLaughlin. It's a play action pass for Morgan. He's looking deep for Barry Hill and he leaps up and he hold it in at the twenty five yard line of Cal. Able to make that catch over Dominic Solomon, the six foot one, two hundred and fifteen pound junior. That's a big leap for the five nine, one hundred and fifty five pound junior Barry Hill. It's a first down and ten for the Rams into Vulcan territory, down to the twenty six yard line. And Hill had a big catch last week. wasn't very active, wasn't targeted a lot, but the one catch he did have went for a touchdown. So his catches have been impactful thus far this season. 14-20 to go in the first half. Morgan throws over the middle and nearly a one-handed grab. Oh. But it looks like pass interference is going to come in and be called. Jeremiah Taylor almost snagged that ball out of the air of one hand and tucked it away. It fell incomplete, but we're going to have pass interference, I believe, on Cal. And that's something you figure with the size that Cal has in their secondary, that they're going to have a physical style of play. As we pass some papers down. Good good work there, Travis. Just doing my part. <laughs> I appreciate that. But that time just a little bit too physical there in the secondary. The Rams have had some early success throwing the ball, and you feel these 
corners are really just trying to impose that advantage using their size and, again, making those referees reach into their pocket. Call pass interference. They don't do it often, but on that one, it was warranted. It got there a little bit too soon. Dorner in motion. They'll go Brown. Brown stutter steps, tries to bounce it outside. Oh, a little a face flag mask. coming in. Looks Drop like, as you said, a face play. mask coming in on that play. Is coming up and making the tackle for Cal was Ibrahim Sano- Sanago. Right, so they're having the talks, so and maybe the referees are trying to decide whether it's a face mask or did he just grab jersey on that one. But the way he went down, it looked like he grabbed all face masks. That you have a shorter running back like Malachi Brown. Well, 5'11", 185, but that defensive lineman is a little bit taller. We saw Jack Rosnidge go down in the Rams' win over Edinburgh. So holding being called there on Brian Jester. The reason why I made the point about Rosnidge is this would be about his territory as a fullback, H-back kind of guy. But if they don't have him, they may be trying to use Jester in that spot. Not certain what his health status is. I just know I that saw him in a boot last week. Okay. I saw him in a boot earlier, so I don't think he'll be out there. But he had a big impact in the Edinburgh game, putting him in. He had some huge blocks to create some lanes for the running backs. Morgan rolling out to his right. Avoids the sack. Morgan throws complete underneath to a wide open Dorner, but I think he came in from out of bounds as a yeah. hat came flying in. So Shepard really hurting itself with these penalties. And after that first drive, just the rhythm of the game has really fallen apart. You had a couple turnovers for the Vulcans. You just had a flurry of penalties for this Rams offense. You said a loss of down, but a replay of second down. It is second down. Illegal touching the call there on Cam Dorner, the Rams wide receiver. So it'll be second and long for Shepard. I think it's second down and about 20. And you wanted to compliment Dorner on that play. Did a good job working back to the ball, opening, trying to find some open space for a scrambling quarterback, just giving him an extra target. But the defender did a good job just to nudge him just enough to knock him out of bounds, making him an ineligible receiver. So second and 20 for Shepard. Brown the back to the right of Morgan as Batten goes in motion. They'll look to throw. Morgan completes the Cordell. Batten makes a move, gets down to about the 20-yard line before he is hit. And brought Hutchinson, down by hey. John Hutchinson, Been very inside active linebacker. So far. Built more like a safety type. Yeah, not That's very big. Yeah, he's only 6'1", 210. But you see a lot of linebackers like that in the PSAC. They want guys that can run because you're going up against very active passing attacks. Last week, very good game for Hutchinson versus Cutstown. Has seven tackles, two of those solo. Also one pass breakup. So that shows he is comfortable playing in space. Third and 19, just over 13 minutes to go in the first half. 7 nothing Rams. Shepard driving down to the 20-yard line of Cal. They'll run the ball with Malachi Brown and another flag coming in from the backfield. Brown didn't find much room, only about to the 17-yard line, about three-yard pickup. But there is a flag. And at this point with these penalties, the Rams are in danger of backing up out of field goal range. So you go from having great field position and all the momentum on your sidelines, and you've been in reverse once you got inside the red zone. Holding call will back up the Rams again. This now puts you in even – typically you would run because it's third and forever, and you're probably not going to get it. We already mentioned Morgan, not a huge arm, but I feel like you're probably going to have to throw now from your from the 30-yard line to try to get into better field goal range for your young kicker. Yeah. James Bozick. Not a lot of plays in the playbook for third and 28. But maybe Shepard has one for third and 29. (laughs) (laughs) Morgan, play action. Steps up. He's under some pressure. Avoids the sack. Dumps it down to Brown. And Brown will get to about the 26-yard line. Good defense. Hutchinson made that hit again. And that's tough. Like, the Vulcans are very tough coming off the edge with those outside linebackers, even though the way Shepard lines up, it forces them into more of a nickel package as opposed to their base 3-4 defense. But Morgan did a good job, one, of not losing the football and then able to make something positive to give his 
field goal kicker just a little bit better of a chance to knock this one through. They are on the left hash. 43-yard field goal for Bozick from that left hash. Not a lot of wind today, so that shouldn't be an issue on the kick. Bozick's kick is up. It's Bucket. good. And James Bozick nails it from 43 yards. Shepard extends its lead to 10 nothing. 11.51 to go in this first half. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Hi, Crescia Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. We welcome you back to California, Pennsylvania, here for Shepherd Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. Dylan Bishop, as well as Daryl Miller, our on site crew this afternoon. And back in the studio, the marvelous Colin McLaughlin. Doing a great job getting us on the air. Fortunately, we missed pregame, but. We can post those interviews later for those that may want to see them. Uh, as Bozick will kick it away, 11.51 to go. In this first half, it's 10-0 Shepard. And the kick will be fielded inside the five-yard line by the Vulcans. And flag coming in again, two of them. Willis with the return. Willis on the Cut return there. Brutus. As Shepard able to get a field goal, and in total for the Rams, it's a seven-play, 51-yard drive. Finished by the 43-yard James Bozick field goal to make it 10-0 Shepard. It's our scoring drive summaries brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. 10-0 Rams, and... Cal will be backed up here after the penalty. But again, you mentioned the point early on. We're starting to approach that area in the game where you're really going to have to start to act with a sense of urgency on the offensive side of the ball for Cal PA. You don't want to fall too far behind and, and allow this Shepard Rams team just to run away with it. But without their top running back in the backfield, limited options for the, for the Vulcans to get back into this ball game. The question will be, can they hold on to the football? Because it could very well be 14-10 Cal right now, but turnovers have hurt him. Black steps up, looking deep over the middle. He's got a man wide open, and it's caught inside the 40 to the 20, the 10, a foot race, touchdown, Cal. Willis takes it 85 yards for the touchdown. And Willis the third had a big game last week versus Cutstown. Had six catches for 41 yards with one touchdown that time. The quarterback, Davis Black, able to go over the top. It wasn't a pretty pass, but the ending was quite beautiful for those Vulcans offense. That was the big play that they needed to get back into this game and our first nominee for play of the game. That was a big-time throw and catch for this Vulcans offense. Extra point coming on for Anthony Betko. As it is 10 to 6, this to make it 10 to 7, and the kick is through. Our score, Shepard 10, Cal 7, an 85-yard touchdown pass from Black to Willis ties it up. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in 30. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Actually, a 91-yard touchdown reception for Willis from Black to 
get Cal on the board, make it a 10-7 game. Vulcans will kick it away in one play, 91-yard drive. Our scoring drive summaries brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Cal will kick it away, back deep for the Rams. Malachi Brown and should be Christian McDowell, but some late runners on here for the Rams. Dorner runs off, McDowell runs on. And Dorner, he's just showing you the type of guy he is. A shorter man, he's going to be the first guy to run out there. That's something as a coach you certainly appreciate. Sometimes things can get hectic during the course of a game. And you always want that guy that's going to step up without having to be called out by name. McDowell going back to return, and McDowell gets it across the 20 to about the 25-yard line. Dorner is the backup kick return man, so he's doing his job. He's supposed to be out there if McDowell can't. He's ready to go. And McDowell gets it out to about the 25. Shepard. Now has it 10 to 7 our score, Travis. As last year's game, if you remember, it was a 10-point lead for Cal before the Rams came back in the final 10 minutes to win it. Steal that one in overtime from the Vulcans, and we got another good one between these two teams. And so far this season, those have been the type of games that the Rams have been involved in. Tight games coming down to that last possession in this game today. Seems to be no different here early on. We certainly didn't expect it to change when you're taking on a quality program like Cal's. Here's a run with Malachi Brown. Gets out to about the 31-yard line before he's tackled. Moving to actually about the 30. So gain of about five on the play. Miller comes up, makes the tackle. Second quarter presented to you on TV 10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg. Your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361 as well as Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience. Go to HagerstownFord.com. 10-7 Rams, 10.53 to go in the first half. Morgan in the gun. Dorner goes in motion. He'll run Brown off the left Big side. Big push up front. Nice juke by Brown before he's brought down for a first down. And you, you see the Rams right now using those offensive formations, really giving that Vulcans defense some difficult looks. They're not able to stay in that base. Like I mentioned earlier, a 3-4 defense, but actually when you look on the field, it's more of a 52 because those outside linebackers are playing predominantly on the line of scrimmage. They did that on first down, and that second down, the Rams come out in the three wide receiver look, and they're not able to stay in that base look. They have to kind of go back into more of a nickel look, and it opens up some running lanes, and that was just a huge push up front by that Rams O-line. Good job, big fellas. First and 10 from the 37, Morgan rolling to the right. Under some pressure, throws out of the sack and incomplete intended for Hill. Seth Morgan goes down awkwardly, but able to get up. Good defense that time. on the pressure. He's second and 10. And that's the first time we've called his name today, but I'm sure it'll be the first of many, Ibrahim Sanago talented linebacker, led the team in sacks last year, had six in a limited reserve role. He appeared in 11 games, not many starts, but when he was in there, extremely active. 19 tackles, 10 of those solo, 8 tackles for loss, 6 sacks, also had a fumble recovery. Just over 10 minutes to go in the first half. Brown now sneaks out of the backfield as a wide receiver, and Morgan will throw complete over the middle. And, oh, my gosh, Travis, it's a pass to the tight end. Brian Jester has it to the 46-yard line. Be second down and short. And that just seems to be the element that that, that really hasn't come full circle for this Rams offense. You know that they have talent on the edges. They've had that for years. But the thing that really kind of sparked their game last week versus Edinburgh is when they started to go in between the hashes. When you make those safeties have to honor over the middle of the field, it's going to open up things more on the outside where you're not having to try to throw the ball through a keyhole. If you keep those safeties inside, it's going to make things loosen up on the outside. Third and two, they run Brown following his linemen. Very close, but I think it's going to be just about a yard short. Excuse me, that was Nazir Russell in on the carry. Fourth and one for Shepard and they're looking to try to go for it here. I was going to say, I was like, that had to be Russell. Malachi Brown hasn't shown that kind of patience. Russell did a good job of being patient, staying behind those offensive linemen, letting them do the dirty work. And right now, the Rams are looking to go for it on a fourth and short. Maybe a hard count. Pistol formation. Russell the back. Morgan comes under center and looks like they're going for that hard count. Now Morgan drops back into the gun, looks toward the sideline. Play clock winding down to five. Four, 
three and two and one, and Shepard will burn a timeout or maybe just take the flag. Certainly would have been in those situations last year where Tyson would have had the, the quick kick. So they'll just take the penalty. I'm happy with that. At least it didn't do the terrible John Harbaugh move. Call timeout to punt. <laughs> you back up five yards, give your punter a little bit more room to drop it in. And like you said, no reason to burn a timeout when you don't have to. So the hard count doesn't work. Cal stays disciplined, and the Rams will punt it away. Ryan Barrick to punt Willis, who's already burned Shepard on a punt return and has the long touchdown in this game for the Vulcans. Is back deep, standing at his own 10. High kick from Barrick. Fielded at about the 14. Willis has some room to work. Willis across the 25, out to about the 30 before he's brought down another penalty flag. Coming in here, looks like Shepard's JT Thomas was coming away, kind of fixing his shoulder pad. So maybe it's a holding. That's the only thing I could really see. Number 26, Mujahid Johnson was in on the tackle. And at this point, you realize it's probably going to be a close game down to the wire. I say stop kicking the Willis. We want to limit the amount of opportunities that he has that has his hands on the ball today. Yeah, hey, I might have been right on that. And again, you, you have a special teams unit. They know who they have back deep, so you sometimes you'll have guys that are just trying to make a play for a teammate. But again, you gotta you gotta get into the point where these penalties are just killing your momentum. Your defense had a nice stop. You're gonna get the ball back with decent field position, then you get the holding penalty and it backs you up just a little bit deeper and puts a little bit more pressure on your offense as they trail here ten to seven in the second quarter. We'll move it back to the 15. Didn't matter last time, though, after they had the penalty. <laughs> they still threw a 91-yard bomb. Back to the 15 now for Davis Black and the Cal offense. Actually, they're going to move it back even farther, all the way back to about the 6- or 7-yard line. The Vulcans in a heavy run look. They have the two wide receivers, but they also have two fullbacks in the game. But the running like back back deep. Boyd is the back. Here for Cal as we approach 8-16 to go in this first half. It's 10-7 Shepard on top. And here we go. First and 10 from the 8-yard line. They'll run Boyd off the right side. And he doesn't get much room. Maybe out to about the 9. Anilio Pena. Along with O'Neal coming up to make that hit. For the Rams. O'Neal and Pena on the stop. Be second down. And again, that has been the one thing that has remained the same with this Rams defense. It's hard to get on the edge. That is one thing that they are built to do. They are fast. They do have tremendous range, making plays sideline to sideline. The teams that have had success running against the Rams defense have ran directly at them, gashing big plays up the middle. One yard gain on the play, second down and nine for Cal. Play action for Black. Looks deep over the, or to the far sideline, excuse me, and incomplete intended for Willis. Weird looking play there. Rams just had some secondary guys fall down. A better ball and Willis may still be running. A Little bit of pressure there in the backfield made him get rid of it sooner. When you're in the end zone, that clock's going to speed up a little bit more in the quarterback's head. It looked like it may have been an option route for that wide receiver. If the corner was going to play deep, you're going to have that come back towards the sidelines, and the wide receiver may have been a little bit late in reacting on that comeback. Third and nine from their own nine with 7.29 to go in the first half, and Shepard up 10-7. to seven. Rams with the three down linemen standing. Grantham will come on a blitz, and now Terry on a delayed blitz. As rolling out and looking to run is Davis Black. He has a first He's got room. He's got blockers. All the way out to about the 40-yard line goes Black. About a 30-yard gain on the play. And Black did a good job of recognizing the coverage, realizing that that secondary had been cleared out. They're downfield. 
locked up man-to-man, was able to pull the ball down, get outside, and rumble. Like we mentioned, not a small guy, 6'5", 230 pounds. On that play, able to show his athleticism as he was able to break contain, get downfield, and pick up a big first down for Cal PA. I believe he had about 24 net yards rushing last week, so not a guy that you would necessarily think, based on that size, can run, but will pull it. And we saw that from Carlisle, the quarterback for Edinburgh last week. He'll throw now on this one complete to the near side. Looks like Hopkins in on that reception. Marty Hopkins with the reception. We have a player down for the Vulcans. The well, DeVay Johnson got rolled up on that time, was doing a good job blocking downfield. And one of the things when you're blocking that you're taught, you don't look behind you. And sometimes that's the drawback. When there's a big old traffic jam behind you, you'll get rolled up on. And there's really nothing that you can do about it. Let's go ahead and take a 30-second break. Shepard leading 10-7 to here in this first half. 6.26 to go. This is Shepard Ranch football on TV 10. We're back in 30. <laughs> Hello. We're here again three times in the past two days. You're where? Bechtel Jewelers. Look. Can mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechtel Jewelers. Welcome you back here to Cal Johnson at Appears to be all right as he jogs off on his own power. Just kind of got, like you said, Travis, in that line. Got rolled up on. So second down and three. That can be, though, that a really dangerous play and injury. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, if you're able to walk off on your own power, that, that's a good sign. But sometimes guys aren't so lucky in those type of plays. Second and three from the 47. Black in the pistol formation. Boyd his back, and they'll run him again. Boyd has the first down, running hard. He's got some pop. And he's, he's no different than Devontae Williams. You can tell that the Vulcans, they have a specific type that they're looking for, 5'8", 175 pounds. Certainly seems like he's going to be the heir apparent for the outgoing Devontae Williams, but Boyd has been really tough in between the tackles. We already saw his powerful stiff arm earlier in that time, some hard running in between the tackles, so... He's a little dynamo here early on. First and 10 from the 45 for Cal. Blitz coming for the Rams. will run Boyd, and Boyd this time is stacked up on that outside. Looked like Muley. Leading the way for the Rams. O'Neal cleaning it up. Baxter in there maybe as well. Jack Baxter, guy who missed all of last season after playing a role two seasons ago for Shepard. Good to see him back for that interior defensive line. Second, about nine, gain of one on the play to the 44, 444 to go in this first half. A long drive here for Cal. See if they can get some points out of it. Black takes the snap, low snap. It's oh. coming, unblocked. Black lays it out there and get blocked out of here. <laughs> at the 10 yard line. Willis again, McDowell in coverage for the Rams. He just tracks the ball really well. Looking back into the sun. So wide receivers, you can't use that as an excuse because Willis was able to bring that one in. Davis is throwing it up, hoping his wide receiver could make a play, and Willis was there to save him yet again. The sophomore, coming off of a good year last year, had played in 10 games, had four starts, 15 catches for 273 yards, and two touchdowns, and off to a good start this year. Gianni Gamble also in coverage. Boyd runs into the line initially, still going, and finally brought down inside the five-yard line. I think Forbes made that tackle. We don't know why McCann's not in the game, but whatever it is, he better get it figured out soon because Boyd is not going to want to come out of the game. He's making the absolute most of his opportunity. Surprisingly, here they do bring him out on second and goal. That's a Devontae. 
Williams. Yeah, Williams coming yeah, in is what I was going to say. 3.40 to go. Helmet coming off there on that one, so that's why he came off. Makes sense. Thank you to Dylan, of course. Always picking up the things that I don't Ever notice. vigilant. Ever vigilant. Second and goal. Williams the back, and Davis Black will burn a timeout. You call a timeout. Boy can get back in the game. 320 to go. Let's take a 30-second break. It's 10-7. to Shepard on top of Cal, but the Vulcans are in the red zone. We'll come back with more Shepard Ranch football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We welcome you back to Cal on our score. Shepard 10, Cal 7. 3.20 to go. Vulcans driving all the way down to the two-yard line. Second and goal for California. Trying to take the lead here against Shepard. Another close ball game for the Rams. 3.20 to go in this first half. Davis Black is in the gun. Boyd is the back to his left on second and goal from the two. Man goes in motion, they'll run Boyd up the middle. Boyd pushing forward and in, touchdown! Vulcans! Bobby Boyd from two yards out, punches it in. And Cal has the lead now at 13-10. And again, the draft set up by a big play by Willis. And then Boyd able to do the rest. And the young man coming in, like we mentioned, the freshman coming in, making some big plays, making the most of his opportunity. Extra point coming on for Betko. And the point after is good. Our score, California 14. Shepard 10, 317 to go in this first half. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. We welcome you back to Adamson Stadium here on the campus of California, Pennsylvania. Our score, California University of Pennsylvania. 3.17 to go in this first half. 14.10. Cal on top of Shepard. Nick Verzellini alongside me. Travis Smith, Dylan Bishop, our do-it-all guy, cameraman, on-site producer, and we'll have him with Coach McCook at the half as well, so sideline reporter. And, of course, Daryl Miller running our camera. Certainly appreciate him as well. Colin McLaughlin back in the studio. Can't forget about him, but... Malachi Brown here from about the seven-yard line. Malachi has some room off that left side. This could be trouble. Brown throws a stiff arm and finally forced out of bounds at around the 40-yard line. The Shepard special teams has made a difference the past two weeks. You had the Miles Greer punt return touchdown. Last week, Travis, a 100-yard kickoff return from Malachi Brown, and here a big kickoff return. Could set them up here. Uh, as Cal will get the ball to start the second half. so Because the momentum, excuse me, <clears throat> momentum has certainly shifted to the sidelines of Cal PA. So you go out there and able to make a big play on special teams, give your offense very good field position, quite possibly with the last drive of the first half. So the Rams have a shot to take the lead going into halftime. And, again, that, 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 that's been the theme so far this year is that the Rams special teams has really showed up to play this year. 3.07 to go in this first half, 14-10 Cal, throw 
on the far side, complete to Jeremiah Taylor. He throws a stiff arm, but is forced out of bounds. You see that Murray, Vulcan. De- the man to force him out. The Vulcan defense has made that adjustment. What they're going to do, they're going to back off a little bit. Allow those plays underneath. Like we mentioned, those big corners, you can do that because you're going to have faith in their ability to make tackles in space. So you play back a little bit so you're not worried so much about the speed, and you're just going to rely on their natural tackling ability to take care of the plays that happen underneath. Second and seven from the 46-yard yard line. Russell finding a little bit of room, but not much. Maybe a gain of two on the play. Bring up a third down for the Rams. Third and about six or five, depending on where they spot it. And Hutchinson in on another tackle. Has been extremely active here so far today. It's about third and five and a half for the Rams here. Dorner, the receiver, to the near side, along with Batten in the slot, and Taylor to the far, Fisher, and that tight end. They dump it down to Brown. He sheds off one tackler and is going to be short of Brown the sticks. The, and the Vulcan defense read their scouting report, or watched them film, rather. That was a play that Shepard used several times against Edinburgh to great success to that short side of the field, that running back rolling out of the backfield, usually trying to create some space underneath for somebody coming across on that drag route. But the Vulcans are able to sniff it out, come up, and again, make that tackle out there in space and making the Rams make a decision here. The ball's on the Vulcan side of the field. You still have a couple timeouts in the back of your pocket. Do you risk it here, trying to go for the points, or well, you want to avoid disaster and just play it safe? They need a timeout as the clock has hit zero, so we'll see if they got a timeout off. They do. Let's go ahead and take one as well. We'll take a 30-second break. Our score, California 14, Shepard 10. We are back in 30 seconds for fourth and two with 127 to go in the first half. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Shepard will punt here on fourth down and two from the 49-yard line. Travis, I feel like this is probably the right call with this team. You, you really don't have that power back or anybody that you would go to on a fourth and two necessarily. You don't have the ability to, at least that we know, for Morgan to go back there and punt, so they will just punt it with Ryan Barrick. It's fair caught at around the 14-yard line by Willis. 14-yard line. The only problem is is the Vulcans have hit two big deep balls. They do have time here before halftime if they want to be aggressive with a minute 21 to go. And, of course, they do get the ball to start the second half. So there's a lot of things that Cal could still do with the time on the clock. So, like you said, minute 21, two timeouts. They've had two huge drives that resulted in touchdowns that started right around in that area. So driving the field doesn't seem to be a problem. But when you have a wide receiver like Willis, that certainly seems to help. And they, you're starting to see this offense settle into what we were expecting coming into today's game with Boyd really making some plays in the running game. You're starting to see what this Cal PA offense really prefers to do. They like to set up those play-action passes by pounding that ball in between the tackles. First down and 10 from the 14. They'll run Boyd, and Boyd has another big hole off that right side. It's a first oh. down and more. Late hit coming, I think, from, was that Grantham or O'Neal on that far side? I think it was Dwayne Grantham. No, it was Harold yeah, O'Neal. Ball Good enough for a Vulcan's first down. I, I understand, like, maybe like a step or two out of bounds. He was out past the white yeah. when he got tackled. They're going to have to throw the penalty on that. I'm curious to see what the uh, penalty yards is going to add up to by halftime. Because I'm sure it's it is. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Like, they've had a game's worth of penalties in the first two quarters. Are you surprised that the Shepard defense just hasn't been maybe as good as we thought it would be with all the guys coming back? I, I feel like the, the difference seems the to be for me is that they lost some of their interior in terms and they lost some of their linebacking play. And maybe that's why they haven't just been as good. I mean, obviously they lost Clayton Batten to injury. Or I'm sorry. 
Yes, Clayton Batten to injury. Well, maybe I said Cordell, but I did say Clayton. Clayton. So, I don't know, I'm just kind of surprised that this unit hasn't been as good as we thought it would be. Here's a completion on a screen pass underneath, and Willis is having a field day. Willis inside the 30 and finally out of bounds around the 15-yard line. And the biggest thing is that they don't have that unstoppable pass rush. Yeah. I, I, think, I think that's been the biggest thing. Like you mentioned, the big guys up front, they were stout as far as stopping the run. But when you had Halloway and Smith out on the edge and they were just able to get to the quarterback with impunity, really changes what that defense is able to do. Also, that defense was really built, really geared towards protecting leads. You have a different style of defense when you're having to basically get into a fist fight to win a game as opposed to a team that's built to protect leads. And right now, it's, it's just changing what their role is on this team. First and 10 from the 22. Davis Black has time. Throws over the middle. Touchdown! Cal, it's Omari Hopkins. Excessive celebration, it looks like. He spiked the football on that play. But I'll tell you what, that's you make plays. Sometimes you can, sometimes you, you can do a little showboating on that. But again, we just talked about it: pass rush or lack thereof. That time, Davis Black just had a chance just to step up and just throw a bullet over the middle, and there was really nobody there to contest it. Excuse me, that might have been Noah Hamlin hauling in that pass. No, I called it right. <laughs> Referee go. got it wrong. Go. <laughs> Trust yourself. Here you go. Or my Hopkins now. As, as the football fans at home will probably say, yes, you made a good play, but you also risk giving up a big play on the ensuing kickoff because now you got to back it up. The Rams kick return team has been red hot so far this season, so you give them the chance to get the ball back, quite possibly good field position, so that penalty could come back to haunt the Vulcans. Extra point is up and good, and Cal has extended its lead to 21-10 with 101 to go in this first half. We will take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. We welcome you back to California, Pennsylvania. Our score, 21-10. Cal on top of Shepard with 101 to go in this first half. Nick Verzlini alongside me, Travis Smith, as Cal again takes it deep down the field. This time in more plays compared to earlier in the ball game. But they go down the field, they get into the end zone. But not too many more. Just a three-play, 86-yard drive, resulting in the Hopkins touchdown. Our score, Cal 21-10. Our scoring drive summary, summaries brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, a fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. After the penalty on the excessive celebration, Cal will kick from its own 20-yard line. Brown and McDowell back deep for the Rams. It's a short kick. Will be fielded around the 30 for Malachi Brown. He gets out to about the 40, sheds off a man, and pushed out of bounds. So it will be really good field position for the Rams, down 21-10. to 10. Two timeouts left. 56 seconds. You feel like you at least need a field goal here, Travis. <clears throat> Got to do something to try to take this home crowd out of it. You want to go into halftime with a little bit of momentum on your sideline as well. Just do something. That defense needs some help for the Rams. They've been out there and they've given up three huge drives that resulted in touchdowns. So right now, other than that first drive for the Rams, they, they, they've kind of sputtered. And a lot of times, uh, the harm has been self-induced. There's been a ton of penalties that, that have derailed the Rams since that opening drive. Morgan looking to throw, throws off his back shot back foot and I think we have a holding call coming in. I think it's going to go on 
Brandon Carr. And that was deep in the backfield. So is that is that a spot foul in college? And they have the holding penalty because if it is, they're going to be backed up almost to the 20. In high school, obviously, not a spot foul. But college, I'm not 100% on that one. Is that in West Virginia? In Virginia, it's it's a spot foul. So or, ten that's what I meant. It yeah. is a spot foul. They are fouled by both <clears throat> Substitution defense. Oh. Holding. Oh. Number 71. So offsetting okay. penalties. Those penalties offset. First down. Well, referees are earning their paycheck here in the yeah. first half of the Gosh. game. <laughs> I have to figure out at halftime how many penalties both teams have. Wait for my whistle. <laughs> for referees whistle. taking control. <laughs> That's what you like to see. <laughs> you got to set the tone. That's their job. All right, 51 seconds to go. We will continue here from the 48-yard line. First down and 10, Morgan looking to throw. Slings it over the middle, caught by Cordell Batten. Down down to the 35 of Cal. Shepard quickly up on the ball. Siegel in on the tackle. Clock will stop with the first down. As soon as that ball is spotted, clock's running now. Morgan looking to throw, throws far side complete and out of bounds goes Dustin Fisher, short of the sticks, about a nine-yard pickup. With the two really good plays for Shepard after that first play with the two penalties. And no need to rush right now. The clock stopped. You still got a couple of timeouts. You're in good field position. You want to make sure you get the right play in, the right personnel in. You got to make the most of this opportunity before you go into halftime. Can't come away empty-handed. 36 seconds. Morgan looking to throw under some pressure. Throws Ooh. far side and nearly intercepted. Knocked away a great play on that back end from Murray there, the defensive back. A six foot, 170 pound sophomore. Rashawn made his Murray. collegiate debut last year versus Shepard, where he had a solo tackle. Last week versus Cutstown, very active in that secondary. Five tackles three of those being solo, so he can't make those tackles in space, and that time almost made a play on the sideline. Third and two from the 27. Morgan fires a dart over the middle, complete, and into the end zone. Touchdown! Shepard, Cam, Dorner for six, and that penalty does come back to hurt Cal as another dart over the middle from Morgan. 21-6 in the score with 27 seconds to go. When the Rams, again, when they're able to make some plays in between the hash marks, it really opens up the entire field. You can't live with those vertical passes on the sideline. Like we mentioned, that pass was almost picked off on the previous play. You go over the middle, there's a lot of open space to operate in there. Extra point is straight through for James Bozick. Player down on the field. Flag on the play as well. So Shepard running off, Cal running off. This must go on the kickoff let's go ahead and take a 30 second break this is shepherd rams football on tv 10 and wrnr tv on youtube we are the skinner brothers most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives and when they're injured or in an accident most people don't know what to do we get it it can be overwhelming nobody likes to be told you need a lawyer but that's why we're here we want to get you back to your normal life and help you recover so if you or loved one has been in an accident Give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. We welcome you back to California, Pennsylvania. Our score, Cal 21, Shepard 17. 27 seconds to go before halftime. So you have the penalty converting, or the penalty contributing, I should say, to that touchdown drive for Shepard. As the Rams Three, take it five. on the drive, on four plays, 52 yards to get right back into the game. Cap it off with the Cameron Dorner touchdown reception. Our scoring drive summary brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Another penalty on Cal on that extra point leading to the Rams kicking off from midfield. And we know how dangerous they've been on the returns, especially Willis. So most likely Bozick's going to kick this out of the end zone for a touchback, even though you wouldn't necessarily get great net yardage on it. I just feel like you want to avoid any return here. 
Yeah, at this point, you want to do whatever you can to keep the ball out of Willis's hands. And they will do exactly <laughs> that as it rolls onto the track from the here at Cal, Adamson, Adamson Stadium in California, Pennsylvania. Great uh, spot here to call a game, Travis. Absolutely. We've lucked out the past couple of weeks. We were at Edinburgh, which is a beautiful campus and a beautiful setup for us. And we come here today. We're outside, and it's you couldn't ask for better weather, clear skies, not too hot, not too cold, nice little breeze, some good football going on down there on the field. And this is probably the best field position that the Vulcans have had so far today. Yeah, coming here in September is a lot better than potentially coming here for a PSAC <laughs> yes. championship down the line. But uh, it's definitely a great spot, great view, so we'll take it. 21-17, our score high snap. They'll run Boyd again, and he skirts Boyd forward. And a flag coming in again. It looked like maybe a late hit from Shepard as two of them fly in. Oh, and this could be big now because like, now. Right now, I think both teams just want to get out of this first half because it it has been the penalty Stop. yardage is, is, is crazy at this point. And, they're, and now we're starting to get into these penalties that you just you can't have. It, it's one thing to get a holding call, but when you're making – Mental mistakes that lead to penalties. That only just unforced kicks. errors. It's not even like in the action of the play. Right. And you're you're making these type of penalties. And especially with the way the Vulcans' offense has been clicking here the past couple of drives, the last thing you want to do is give them 15 free yards and a free timeout because the clock stops. Yeah. Even if they don't take a shot here, I mean they could. With 20 seconds, they. Have some time to work with, and we know how good the deep balls have been for Cal, especially Willis has already carved up this Rams defense. You're now moving the ball to your own 43. Don't know exactly the leg on Betco, but if you could get it into field goal range, depending on how strong of a leg he has, we'll see what Cal's willing to do. They do get the ball to start the second half, so may not want to be too aggressive here. We'll have to wait and see. The Vulcans taking their time. The clock is running. Yes, yeah, so that kind of indicates that they're not going to be too aggressive. They'll run Boyd here near side. Boyd gets out to about midfield. And, and stays in bounds. Interesting Emilio choice. Pena tackles him. Timeout, I believe. Or at least. And Boyd has shown some veteran savvy on the previous play, choosing not to bounce it outside, takes it inside. A lot of times you don't get that with young running backs. On that last play, had a chance to run out of bounds and possibly have another play. Chooses to stay in bounds. I'm not sure if the Vulcans called a timeout. They did. So okay, yeah. They so. reset the game clock. To, I believe it was two seconds, is what they said. So they'll so. have some time to at least throw one deep here, and that has been an issue for Shepard today. And again, it, it's been two names that have come up huge. It's, it's been Boyd and it's been Willis. The Rams are certainly that. That's certainly going to be the first topic of discussion is what are we going to do with Willis on the outside because they've shown a variety of looks, double teams and everything else. And just Willis just seems to keep coming up with answers. And the big arm of Davis Black has really loomed large here in the first half. Yeah, I mean, Shepard was expecting to have its – Two starting corners from last season, Dante Harrison and Clayton Baden back. Baden goes down with the injury. You've now had to look to other guys step up. Adamas has stepped up at times, but I haven't really seen a lot of him today. And they're going to run. Wow, this is rising. Well, I called the timeout to run the phone. Get it down to the 40-yard line. And that will do it for the first half. Our score, Cal 21, Shepard 17. We'll take a two-minute break. Or I'm sorry, a three-minute break, but not yet. We'll wait for Dylan to be down on the sidelines with Ernie McCook as Coach McCook makes his way over. Shepard ending up getting back into this game with a last-second drive. As Dylan down there, he's lurking like a free safety playing that middle third. Yeah. He, he looks to Ladies find the head man. Please welcome to the field. The but he's avoiding him, I think. California Vulcan Marching Band. Coach McCook hard to track down in open space. The band is under the direction. 
possession of Dr. Frank Spears. I do see him now. Assistant Coach McCook, last one off the field. First one on, last one off. There we go. As all good generals should do. So we now see Dylan down there with Coach McCook. Dylan, go ahead and take it away. All right, Coach McCook here going into the half down by four points. You guys have forced some turnovers, but you've given up some big plays in the passing game. How do you kind of stay aggressive and while well, you know, still keeping defense in front of you? Yeah, we just need to come out of the locker room, get a stop on defense, and, and make some plays offensively. We've got to do what we're coached to do. We've got to execute, do the fundamental things right, do the little things right, play with poise, and execute. And, uh, you know, it's a second half football, and we're, you know, we're going to have to play well to find a way to win. One more thing, nine penalties, 88 penalty yards in the first half. What are you going to tell your team when you get in there try to clean that up? I'm going to tell my team, continue to play and don't let the officials get in your head. You know, um, I, you know I'm, I, I question some of those things, but, you know, we, they called them. They count against us. Uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, and, uh, but we're going to have to we, – we can't let the officials get in our head. We can't let Cal get in our head. We've got to execute the job that we have. All right, Coach, thank you. Good luck. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dylan. Great stuff down there on the field with Coach McCook. And thank you to Coach McCook as well for his halftime interview. So now we'll take that three-minute break. And on the other side of that three-minute break, we'll have the Mansion Freddy halftime show. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The Honda HRV, CRV, Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. They all have one thing in common. They never back off from a challenge. Available with all wheel drive, the Honda SUV lineup has the performance you can count on and the capability to amaze. It's no wonder Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com named Honda the 2022 best value brand. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. Based on 2022 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a newer used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. We're at the half. Time for a scoring recap, stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team. you back to California, Pennsylvania. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Dylan Bishop. Or I'm sorry, Travis Smith, Dylan Bishop, our cameraman and on-site producer. He is alongside me. He is right next to me. And then 
Of course, Daryl Miller, our cameraman, and back in the studio, Colin McLaughlin. 21-17, California leading Shepard here at the half. Our halftime show is brought to you by the Mansion Freddy Law Firm in Martinsburg, where it's about seeking justice for you. Go to wvjusticelawyers.com. Travis, a uh, competitive first half of play between these two teams like we expected. We knew Shepard would be in for another good game. Cal, one of the best programs in the PSAC, coming off of that emotional comeback win against Kutztown. This is a talented squad, and they've shown that today, and both teams playing pretty well. Absolutely, and you look over to that Vulcans football team doing it out without their number one running back, Eric McCann the third. He's been out. But he has not been missed. Bobby Boyd Jr. has came into the game and played his butt off. Ten carries, 65 yards, touchdown already on the game. And you could tell that's when that Vulcans offense is really in their element, when they're able to use that running game to set up their play-action pass. And Eric Willis the third has just had an absolute monster first half. Four catches, 171 yards, and a touchdown. One of those touchdowns coming on a 91-yard bomb. So Eric Willis has just giving fits to that Rams defense. But credit to Shepard. They have been resilient, able to get that ball back after the penalty, after that last Vulcans touchdown, used that great field position, got a good return, and then Seth Morgan was able to take it the rest of the way, able to put up that last touchdown to make it 17-21. to So the Rams just have to do something about those penalties. It's just been too much. You got nine penalties for 81 yards, and they have just been drive killers so far. There's been a couple times where they've been deep in Vulcans territory where they had to settle for a field goal because they got backed up so much due to penalties. Coach McCook touched on that going into halftime, that the team has to settle down, control what they can't control, and don't give the referees anything to throw a flag on because right now the referees have just really been a big part of what's going on in the first half. It's really after that first drive, it really hasn't been a good rhythm to the football game because there's been so many penalties. It's true, and some even coming on defense and special teams as well, so... It's not just one area. It's not like just you're getting a lot of holding calls or anything. It's been a whole team thing, so definitely something Shepard will look to clean up. Your first half stats are brought to you by Larry DeMarco at the Modern Real at Modern Realty Results. If you're looking for a home in the tri-state, they have you covered. Let's get into those first half stats. We'll start with the visitors, the Shepard Rams on the ground. Malachi Brown, eight carries for a net gain of 42 yards. Nazir Russell, three carries for three yards. Seth Morgan, pretty good first half, 16 to 20, 195 yards and two scores. Cam Dorner, five catches, 59 yards to lead the way with a touchdown. Cordell Batten, three catches, 43 yards. Jeremiah Taylor, three catches for 41 yards. Malachi Brown, two catches for eight yards. Defensively for Shepard, Harold O'Neill leads the way with six tackles. Christian McDowell with four. Miles Greer with three, and Dwayne Grantham with three as well. On the California side, Bobby Boyd Jr., 10 carries, 65 yards, and a score. Davis Black, 9 of 13, 228 yards. They're officially ruling that an interception, by the way, on the Pena play. Two, ch- two touchdowns as well. Eric Willis has had a day and a half. Four catches, 171 yards, and a touchdown. The lawn of 91 Amari Hopkins, three catches for 33 yards. Demonte Martin, two catches for 24 yards. Hutchinson leads the way in tackles at the half for Cal with six of them. Murray with four, Siegel with four, and Miller with three. You look at some of the team stats in this first half. 108 total rush yards for Cal on 16 attempts, just 45 for Shepard on 11 attempts. That's another you know, key number here at the half. Shepard has had to punt four times. Cal has punted just once. We mentioned the penalty yardage already. Shepard has actually had the majority of the possession time, which makes sense because Cal had some big plays. But typically that's not how things used to work out. Shepard used to never have any possession time because they were making the big plays. And it's weird because the Vulcans have had to travel so far to and get their touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. So it has been a little different, but... Let's go ahead and take another three-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll hear from Kyle McLaughlin back in the studio. Once again, our score here at the half, Shepard 21, California PA 17. This is Shepard Ranch Football on TV 10 and WRNR-TV on YouTube. We're back in three minutes. 
I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How can I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm John Everson, Private Wealth Advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Hi, Crescia Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. Really? Yeah. (laughs) I'm gonna call my parents. Dad, come over. The first gets done. The Traeger Connected Experience. Everything you need for epic flavor. And then some. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. Welcome into the Halftime Scoreboard Show on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube at the half between Shepard and Cal U. Cal U, the Vulcans, on top at home over the Shepard Rams right now, 21-17. to Let's get some other scores around, from around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference at the half. It's Cudstown putting the beat down at home on Mercyhurst right now, 37 to nothing. Also at the half, it is Westchester taking the lead on Gannon after scoring 17 in the second. They lead 17 to 10. Also, now starting in the second quarter with kickoff at one o'clock. Uh, one o'clock, excuse me. It is 10 nothing, Clarion leading Lockhaven. So that one, 10 nothing, start of the second. In the first quarter with 7:23 still to go. It is East Stroudsburg now leading over Seton Hill 14 to 7 and then later on today here in the PSAC kickoff at 2 o'clock it is Shippensburg at IUP Edinburgh at Bloomsburg Millersville takes on Slippery Rock that at 6 o'clock so those are your PSAC scores let's now get you some NCAA Division 1 top 25 action almost at the half here between Number three, Florida State and Boston College. 30 seconds remain in the second quarter. It's Florida State up 17 to 10. 208 to go in the second quarter. Number seven, Penn State on the road against Illinois. Illinois just scored to make it 13 to 7 now. 50 seconds to go before halftime. It's number 14, LSU on top of Mississippi State. 24 to 7. 
at halftime, number 15, Kansas State currently losing to Missouri, 17 to 14. Kicking off at 2 o'clock, it will be number 12, Utah against Weber State. At 2.30, number 9, Notre Dame against Central Michigan. Then at 3.30, you got number 1, Georgia against South Carolina. Number 10, Alabama against South Florida. Number 16, Oregon State and San Diego State at 3.30 as well. And then Oklahoma, Tulsa, North Carolina, Minnesota, Duke Northwestern, Iowa, Western Michigan. At 4, you got Ohio State, Western Kentucky. And I'll get you more of those later on, but Got to send it back here soon to Cal U for the second half again. California 21, Shepard 17 is your score. We'll step aside, take another three-minute break, and then you'll have the second half between the Rams and the Vulcans here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm in new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rear view mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. The Honda HRV, CRV, Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. They all have one thing in common. They never back off from a challenge. Available with all wheel drive, the Honda SUV lineup has the performance you can count on and the capability to amaze. It's no wonder Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com named Honda the 2022 best value brand. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. Based on 2022 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. We welcome you back to California, Pennsylvania. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, Dylan Bishop as well, our utility man today, and on camera, Daryl Miller. Back in the studio, Colin McLaughlin. Our score here at the half, Shepard trailing 21-17 to the Cal Vulcans. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis, and, and Travis... Uh, what are some keys you think for the second half of play for Shepard? How do they come back and win it? And, and for Cal, you know, they play pretty well, but how do they maintain this lead? 
Well, looking at the defensive side of the ball for Shepard, they have to get pressure on the quarterback. Now the trick is going to come of how they're going to be able to manufacture their pressure. They've shown that they haven't been able to do it with just their front four, so that means that they're going to have to blitz. If you're going to blitz, that means you're going to take some guys out of coverage, so you're going to be exposed on the back end, so you have to get home. They're going to have to be able to blitz effectively and try to make Davis Black get rid of that ball a little bit quicker than what he wants. And just to start things off the way we finish, Referees blow the play dead. At least it wasn't okay. a penalty this okay. time. We'll take it. Anything for Cal? You think <laughs> they could do a little bit better in the second half? Uh, they got to do a better job protecting the middle. They, they gave us some big plays down the stretch. I know the Rams haven't gone to it often, but they have two good safeties in the middle for that Vulcan defense. So they've got to stay in the middle, honor their responsibilities, and make those Rams go to the sidelines. It seemed like those corners were doing a good job of making that adjustment but those safeties, Siegel and Solomon, have to do a better job of patrolling the middle of the field and making the Rams have to make those plays to the outside. I think those corners are making an adjustment where they're able to time out those deep balls, but the safeties have to really start taking control of the middle of the field. Kickoff fielded around the 11-yard line for Cal. They're going to get out to about the 19 for the Rams come up and make the tackle. Josh Miller on the tackle. I'm sorry, that's wrong team. But uh, out to the 24-yard line, excuse me, on that tackle for the Rams, Makai Young, the defensive back. 24-yard line to start this second half. Our second half kickoff is brought to you by Ollie's VIP Northside, the best local spot to catch sports or hang out with friends. Stop by 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. Ollie's VIP will see you for the game. First and 10 from the 24 for Davis Black in the Vulcan offense. Play action. Black has all day to throw. Fires over the middle. Commit complete to DeMonte Martin. He is brought down by Christian McDowell just short of the first down marker. Or no, they will give him the first down as he was right at the sticks. First and 10, Cal. From our perspective, that looked like a pretty generous spot on that one, but Cal PA able to come out, use that play action pass. They did a good job of establishing that run in the first half with Boyd stepping in, filling in marvelously for McCann, who's not playing in today's game. You're able to do that. You're also able to set up that play action pass. First and 10 here. Low run. Boyd again off this near side and not much room on that one. And one of the few mistakes that the freshman running back has made so far today ran outside of the kickout block on that one. Just a little bit too eager to turn on the Jets and that's something that he's going to learn as he gets a little bit older and the game slows down is having that bit of patience. Maybe not going in the fifth gear right off the bat slowing down a little bit. Let those big uglies up front do all the dirty work for you and you cut it back to a wide open space in the middle. The Rams defense was Quick to cap. Quarterback here in the second half. Have to. No gain to the 34 yard line. O'Neill makes the tackle. Black will throw on second down, and he'll throw incomplete off the shin of Dante Harrison and incomplete. Demonte Martin. Harrison would have saw that one coming. It was a weird play. It looked like neither one of them, the wide receiver nor the defensive back. Saw that one. Strength. Ollie's VIP North Side is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP North Side. We'll see you for the game. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343. 
to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. The WB Hospitals East Foundation is excited to announce the inaugural Dr. Frank Sabato Jr. Pickleball Classic to be held on Saturday, September 23rd at the W. Randy Smith Recreation Center in Inwood. Join us for a fun round-robin style pickleball tournament with start times at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. Awards ceremony and lunch will follow. To register as a player or sponsor, call 304-264-1223 or go to wbmedicine.org backslash berkeley backslash giving to download the registration form. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. to plug in. <clears throat> Is it good? It's gone. All right, we good? All right. All right. Third and ten, pass interference. They got the first down. First down, Amari Terry absolutely blasted Boyd. The very next play, they run Boyd, and he gashes them for like about a 15-yard gain. Thank you, Travis, for the play summary. I apologize for those technical difficulties. Martin in and out of his hands incomplete. And that will bring up second down and 10 from the 39-yard line of Shepard for Cal. Davis Black in the shotgun formation. Eleven fifty-four to go in this third quarter. First drive of the third quarter here for either team. Cal driving down the field into Rams territory. Black adjusting and now hands it off. Boyd, a good run Boyd off the, the near side, tackled by Dante Harrison. So it'll be a third and long. For California, Pennsylvania. The Rams defense looked like they made a switch predominantly in the first half. They had four down linemen, but they were just doing a straight rush. You didn't see a lot of uh, twists or stunts or anything like that to try to manufacture some pressure. Here in the second half, they've come out and it's been three down linemen, and they've bringing they've been bringing some heat with their linebackers out there. So interesting to see how this Rams defense is trying to make an adjustment to try to make things a little bit more uncomfortable for Davis Black. Third and seven from the 36-yard line. Black looking to throw. Has time. Steps up in the pocket. Pocket is sacked. Mike Forbes off the edge for the Rams. As that blitz that time working, Travis, forcing Black to step up. And that allowed Forbes to come over and make the tackle. And it's, it, it's an interesting adjustment because we're used to seeing the Rams in that four-down lineman and rushing upfield and able to get on the edge. They haven't been able to do that so far this year. And that adjustment, they go to three-down lineman, but then the linebackers get a little bit more active. So right now the Rams just using that athleticism that they have at the second level, able to get some pressure back there, and the quarterback gets some mismatches up front, and that time able to get a big sack on third down, forcing a punt. Rams get some pressure on that punt. It's Going to be fielded by Greer inside the five, and he takes a shot at around the nine-yard line. I don't, Probably would have rolled into the end zone. I, feel I like don't know why. The, usually the, the rule of thumb is for a punt return, you put your heels on the 10, and if the ball goes over your head, you let it go. I know Greer's made some plays, and he's desperate to get this Rams team back into it, but you really put your team four. in a tough spot. Yeah, you really put your team in a tough spot when you field that and you only get it out to the nine-yard line. Well, the good thing is Shepard did get the stop on defense that it needed to start this second half. Like and they got a sack. Hook called, and they got a sack. <laughs> they got a sack. Haven't been a whole lot. Might only be the might be the first on the year for Shepard. It's at most the second. Defense. 
I think it's only the second sack. I think Nathan Muley is the only other Rams defender that has a sack so far this year. That's what I had thought, maybe one early in the year, but or in an earlier game, but none before that, or none other than that. Is Malachi Brown breaking through the line and getting out to around the 17-yard line. The ball carrier. Gain six or seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. And you just have to be impressed with just the physicality that Malachi Brown runs with. 5'11", 185 pounds. He is a stout runner in between the tackles. Sometimes, you know, the game is a little bit fast for him where he doesn't see the hole or has that natural feel for it, but there's, there's no lacking of one two when he has the ball in his hands. Second down and two. Morgan throws complete on the far side to Dorner. Dorner has the first down on the screen play. It's interesting how Cal was just letting them get to the sticks before they didn't attack Dorner on that one. Probably just didn't want to miss the tackles, what I would presume. But I, I, I th- And I think that's the bet that they're making. They was like, we may not have the speed to keep up with these Rams wide receivers, but we can play back and rely on our, our size and strength of our corners. You, you realize that most of those guys are six foot in that 200-pound range that they can come up and make tackles in space. So I, I think that's the – route that they're going to choose it. We're going to keep it conservative, keep everything in front of us, and then just rally to the football and make the tackle. First down and 10, though, for the Rams. Play action for Morgan. He's under some pressure from the blind that side. Was Throws it in double coverage, and it's intercepted. All the way down inside the 25-yard line. Coming up with it was Dominic Solomon, the junior corner. And it was a bad holding in the backfield on that play. I believe left tackle is going to be Chandler Brown. He had the tough job of trying to block Josh Miller coming in hard off the edge. I'm not sure what that second flag was for. It seemed like that happened after the interception. You hope if it's Shepard, it's on the defense because Morgan was under pressure, probably took a big hit on that one it looked like and threw into triple coverage, and it was intercepted by Solomon who took it into Shepard territory, and now we'll see if this penalty is on the defense. And then another referee comes in and drops another flag. There's this all kinds of wrong on that play. As of right now, with the Shepard offense staying on the field, it, it appears that this could be a good thing for the Rams. Well, they're both on count. Roughing the passer. Wow. Roughing the passer call takes away the interception. That is a huge call to save Shepard from a turnover that would have set up Cal on the Shepard side of the field. So far, the turnovers have been huge, Travis. We kind of overlooked this in the first half stats portion of the halftime show. We had the interception and the fumble both on Shepard's side of the field for Cal when they could have been driving and putting up more points in that first half. Still lead it by four here with 8.54 to go, but now after the penalty, that takes away the Morgan interception. That's, that, that was a huge swing. You hear a lot of groans coming from this Cal PA sideline, and I have to agree with them. That was a pretty blatant hold on the backside, and for I them think. not to see the hold and then call roughing the passer. Morgan lost his helmet, so Leck Powell is in. At quarterback for Shepard for a play. I do see Seth standing on the sideline getting ready to check back in after this first down and 10 snap for Shepard from their own 36. Powell handed off to Brown, who hurls Ooh, a man hit. at the line of scrimmage. Hutchinson. And then is met by Not Hutchinson. Morgan will come back on to the field, so good to see he has no injury on the play. It was just the helmet came off, so it'll be second and eight after the two yard pickup. So the Rams have a good opportunity to get back into this game, possibly take the lead after a strange series of penalties. Second and nine for the Rams, 37-yard line, 8.15 to go in the third. Morgan throws to the far side, complete to Taylor, and he is pushed out of bounds almost immediately by Robin and Murray coming over there to make the play. 
And Murray, the sophomore, you, this is a defense. There's a lot of turnover on this defense. A lot of guys that got time last year but now are forced into that starting role. This Vulcans team went 6-5 and five last year and had to work in a lot of young guys. It's a very young defense. So now you're starting to see the benefit of that experience this year with a guy like Murray. He appeared in nine games last year. But now he's a starter for this Vulcans defense. Morgan throws for Dorner, who leaps up and makes the catch on the sideline, but he was out of bounds. Incomplete pass. Dorner was wide open. It feels like, Travis, they have to make that play. Because that's what the defense has given them. The defense is backing off. They really don't want to try to go speed for speed. They're not going to win that matchup. They've struggled so far today in that matchup, so they're going to play back, keep everything in front of them, and rallying rallying to the football and making the tackle. That's a formula that we saw last year with Kutztown. That's one of the ways that they played against that Shepard offense is we're just going to play back, keep everything in front of us, and tackle well in space, and don't let those wide receivers rack up any yak. Willis inside the 15-yard line will come up, let it bounce at the 20 and roll all the way down. It takes a shepherd roll to about the 10-yard line. Travis, I'm, I'm wondering there on that play, is that more on Dorner? Does he have to get the feet in, or do you think a better ball there? It needs to be a better ball because the ball kind of sailed. It was late getting there. So Dorner had to go up and get it. Dorner is not a small wide receiver. He's 6'2", 190. So if he has to go up to the top shelf to get a pass, I mean, it, it's a little a little bit high. And that's something that Seth Morgan, that, and a lot of times it's to the Rams' benefit when he, when he throws those floaters to the sidelines. But when you're starting to do those short passes underneath, you need to have a little bit of zip on them. You can't have those things hanging up in the air because those Vulcan defensive coordinators, they're going to see that eventually, and those corners are going to start cheating up and trying to make a play on it here eventually. We saw that earlier in the first half where the – corner was able to make a play on the ball so we might see some more of that here in the second half unfortunately for Shepard they were forced to punt and now a penalty coming in from the back official false start so that will back him up a little bit more here for Cal who leads 21-17 with 7 23 to go in the third quarter a lot of time left in this game and honestly, Cal's been better when they've had the ball back. That's what, yeah, I was getting ready to say that. They've had no problem driving the length of the field so far today. So really not an uncomfortable situation for the Vulcans offense so far today. Backed up on their own five-yard line is California PA. Black from his own end zone throws a screen pass no underneath. And it's going to go for big yardage, and it could go all the way. Willis down the sideline. All the way to the end zone on the wide receiver screen. Willis has had an unbelievable day. He's over 200 yards receiving. 95 yards on a wide receiver screen for a touchdown. Unbelievable, Travis. So here I was thinking in the first half, hey, a 91-yard pass, that's probably a career best. And not even a couple minutes later, he takes one 95 yards. And all it was, a simple tunnel screen. And the the quarterback had his choice. It was a tunnel screen on either side. Of course you're going to go to Willis. He gets the ball, and he's able to set up his blocks. And after that, he's able to turn on the Jets. And there was nothing that Rams secondary could do with his speed. Eric Willis the third, 95 yards, living up to the name, 27-17. The extra point is up and perfect for Cal. 28-17, 7.09 to go. We're back in 30. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. 95-yard wide receiver screen extends the California Vulcans lead out to 28-17 over Shepard with 7.09 to go in this third quarter. Our scoring drive summary brought to you by Paul Espinosa for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Travis, a lot of time left in this game, but... The big plays, they keep happening to Shepard defensively. Last week it was on the ground, this week it's through the air. 
And I really don't know what you can do to make that adjustment. We talked about not being able to get pressure, but that was just a, a quick play that time by Eric da- uh, by Davis Black, able to get the ball out of his hands and just getting the ball to Willis the third. and he has just been red hot so far today. Shortest wide receiver in that staff, but he has – and they're cast a large shadow so far in today's game. Cam Dorner says not over yet. Dorner to the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Shepard, as he high steps his way in. And that's the Rams you, are right back in it at 28-23. And that's how you answer a touchdown like that. You return one yourself. And, again, this Rams special teams unit has just been playing their tails off so far this year, scoring a touchdown in each one of the three games so far. Punt return in the first game, kick return in the second game, kick return here in the third game. Special teams unit has been the saving grace for this Shepherd Rams football team. Let's see if this defense can get a little bit of momentum going, coming back out here on the field and trying to slow down that Vulcans offense. Whatever you do, don't kick the ball inside the 10. Don't They're dangerous the- down there. <laughs> Let's take the illegal procedure. <laughs> And don't kick it to Shepard at all. <laughs> yes. Three straight weeks, a special teams touchdown for the Rams. A punt return in week one from Miles Greer. A kickoff return last week from Malachi Brown. And now a kickoff return for Cam Dorner. The extra point is good. And our score, Cal 28, Shepard 24. Great ball game between these two teams. We'll be back. In 30 seconds, this is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The Honda HRV, CRV, Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. They all have one thing in common. They never back off from a challenge. Available with all wheel drive, the Honda SUV lineup has the performance you can count on and the capability to amaze. It's no wonder Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com named Honda the 2022 best value brand. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. Based on 2022 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. Takes it back on the kickoff return from Cameron Dorner. It is 28 24, 656 to go in this third quarter. And what has been an electrifying game between Shepard and Cal. Big plays now on both sides. The Rams take back another kickoff in back to back weeks. And the third special teams touchdown of the year. Miles Greer with the punt return in week one. Malachi Brown with the kickoff return. And now Dorner with the kickoff return. That's pretty crazy. To have three kickoff returns or three return touchdowns is insane, but three different guys, it seems like even more unreal. As Cal will just take a knee, good kick from Bozik. But, Travis, we mentioned it, the, the moves from Cam Dorner, you said he had a Euro step uh, to be in between the break, and he is a former basketball player, nearly played basketball for Shepard, but just seemed like a little bit too much, really couldn't work out the transition from football to basketball, but... Just an excellent athlete out of Oakdale High School. And that time just in the middle of the field, and that poor kicker <laughs> had no help in the middle of the field. And Dorner using that Euro step, looking like Manu Ginobili in the open court. Well, they're showing the replay again on the board. Cameron Dorner just turning on the Jets. And again, like you mentioned, it's all coming from different people. So it's not that you're so much reliant on one special athlete to make all these plays. You have a good special teams unit when you're able to rotate in different guys but yet still get the same result. So hats off to that Rams coaching staff being able to get those plays consistently. The Rams defense got to stop when it needed to to start the second half. You could really use one here after the momentum has flipped back to Shepard at 28-24, 6.56 to go in this third quarter. Black in the pistol formation. Now it's a shotgun as the back moves to his left. It's Boyd running off the right side. Shepard's done a solid job of stacking it up. Omari Terry coming up and making the tackle. That will bring up second down, but a flag in on the play. So we couldn't go more than two plays without a penalty. But the Rams needed that special teams play. And not only that, special teams coordinator Luke Wright also needed that play because he coaches defensive backs as well. He needed something to smile about today because his secondary has had a long day at the office so far. Luke Wright maybe getting a head coaching job after the Shepherd <laughs> yeah. special teams performance this season. The third quarter presented to you on TV10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance and Martinsburg or Total Insurance Solution at 121. Administrative Drive in Martinsburg, call 304-263-3361. 
as we have a first and 15 after the penalty from the 20-yard line of California. Black looking to throw. Flyers to the near side complete to Hamlin underneath, and Hamlin is thrown out of bounds at around the 27, 28-yard line by Dante Harrison. Sit up to about the 28 Our other third quarter sponsor here is W. Harley Miller Systems, providing custom integration services like seven. home and office automation, home theater networking, audio, video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com. We got a second down and seven from the 28 for Black and the Cal offense. Thir- I'm sorry, 28-24 our score. And Black will run, or the Cal will run the ball and maybe a two-yard gain. Miles the Greer carries. finishing the tackle Takes there the for Shepard. Terry, the first man there, will be third down and medium for the Vulcans. Cal PA ran that counter earlier in the first half, but the difference was they ran it with Devontae Williams. And the Rams' defense was able to gobble it up that time. Boyd has been the hot hand so far today, and he was able to pick up a couple of yards on that play. But the Vulcans just trying to settle back into a rhythm. They don't want this game to turn into a track meet. They want to go ahead and get back to their run game and settle this game down and a little bit more of their tempo. Third and five from the 30. Black tipped at the line and incomplete. Shepard getting pressure as well. Terry in there. I believe Kevin Kowser got a hand on it to knock it away, and it will be fourth down. Fourth down. You're just starting to see Amari Terry just emerging as that emotional leader for that defense. Has had some big hits here in the second half. He's out there flying around. This defense for the Rams showing some different looks, trying to bring some pressure. Not so much relying on those down linemen to get to the quarterback. Now they're starting to bring some linebackers. Now they're starting to bring some DBs off the edge. You're starting to see it, it is affecting the passing game for Cal PA. Greer is back on his own. 30-yard line, coming out nearly crossed the line. No penalty coming in from the officials. Cal is going berserk on the sideline. The punt is a low kick. Greer will let it bounce at about the 36. It will roll inside and then take a shepherd roll to about the 31-yard line. That's where the Rams will take over. First and 10 from the 31. Cal is still letting the officials hear it here on the near sideline. The Rams getting the ball back. Good field position. And again, with an opportunity to take the lead. As good as Cal PA has played, the Rams have just been hanging around, hanging around when you know that this Ram team has big play potential. And when you have an advantage on a team, you don't put them away. It usually comes back to haunt you. So see if this Vulcans defense can, can rise to the occasion, or will it be the Rams that are able to impose their will and take the lead? Well, Brown will go nowhere, lose a yard here on first down. Brown, the ball carrier. Filling the gap for Cal. The big fella up front. Noah Silva. The 6'3", 295-pound senior coming up to make that play. No gain or loss of one on the play, excuse me. Second and 11 for the Rams in the shotgun formation. Both tight ends are out to the near side in Fisher and Jester. Interesting formation. As Morgan's under some pressure, rolling to his right, throws back across his body to an open Malachi Brown. He makes a man miss. Brown has the first down and finally out of bounds. Physicality on both ends there between him and Dominic Suleiman as Brown refusing to go down. And that might be the spark Shepard needed offensively. Kind of a risky throw from Morgan, but it works out. Not too often does it turn out to your benefit when the quarterback's rolling out to his right and then throws the ball back across to his body. But like we mentioned, that Cal PA defense, they've been backed off. So normally you have somebody hanging out there in the middle of the field, but because they're playing that soft shell coverage, they don't have anybody in that area. Good job of Seth Morgan locating his receiver downfield, Malachi Brown, making something happen. Morgan throws the Fisher, but he dropped it incomplete. Fisher, you don't get many looks. When you get that target, you got to make the most of it. He started to run before he made the catch. It'll be second and ten now for Shepard. 3.36 to go in this third quarter. 28-24, Cal still leading Shepard. 
But the Rams starting to move the ball out toward midfield to the 48-yard line. Russell in the backfield. Morgan will be forced to throw on second and 10. Throws to the near side, complete to Jeremiah Taylor. Suleiman comes up, makes the stop almost immediately. That's been something that in the first two weeks, maybe Taylor sheds off that tackler. Cal has been very good at tackling in the secondary today. This bigger, more physical type of defensive backs for this Vulcans defense. You see Russell in. He's coming in to help out Chandler Brown on that left side. It's been a couple of times where Brown could have been called for holding. They bring in Russell to go and chip Miller coming in off the edge. He's been giving Chandler Brown fits all day today. Third and seven from the 49. Dorner in motion. Shepard looking to throw. They look for Cam Dorner, and they got him on the pump, and it's all the way into the touchdown, into the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard. Another play that we saw a lot of last week, the pump for Morgan, and then he looks deep to Dorner, and it results in six for the Rams. Shepard now has the lead at 30-28 with 2.53 to go in this third quarter. The Rams able to set up that counter punch by using those short passes underneath. And again, that defense is going to adjust. We know that they want to play off and try to rally to the football. So you want to take advantage of that aggressiveness. Of that aggressiveness. Excuse me. When you make that pump, they're going to want to come up hard to make that tackle. And when they do, Dorner was just able to slip behind them and run into the end zone uncontested. Extra point, no good. Our score, Shepard 30. Cal 28, 2.53 to play in the third quarter. We're back in 30 seconds with more Shepard Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Hello. We're here again three times in the past two days. You're where? At Bill Jewelers. Look. Can mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechtel Jewelers. We welcome you back to Adamson Stadium here in California, Pennsylvania. PSAC cross division battle between the Shepherd University Rams and the California Vulcans. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith. Our score, Shepard 30, Shepherd 30, Cal 28, 2.53 to go in the third quarter. A missed extra point from James Bozick after the Cam Dorner touchdown. And this will be a touchback for Cal. But a good drive there, Travis, for Shepard. We mentioned it, though, earlier in the season. The missed extra point here from Bozick now could come back and hurt Shepard. And I believe that's his first miss so far this season. So an uncharacteristic mistake by the young kicker. Seemed like he was kind of close on that last one, but it did end up going through. Well, in the last one, he kicked it up to the guy in the scissor lift. He had to throw it down after the referees blew the whistle. But again, it leaves the door open, so now the Vulcans can take the lead with a field goal. Leave that door open. It is just Both these teams, it's a... Two elite fighters that are just trading big punches right now. Five play, 69-yard drive for the Rams, resulting in six for Cam Dorner as they'll run Boyd off the right side, and he'll get out to about the 29-yard line. Our scoring drive summaries are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Mr. Espinoza has gotten his money's worth today with all these touchdowns. <laughs> Absolutely. He made a good bet. 2.30 to go in this third quarter. Still a lot of game left. Shepard up by two. Black will take the snap, turn around, heading it to his running back, Boyd, who's just become the bell cow. And everybody on the Shepard front seven having to come in and make that tackle. Boyd again, the ball carrier. And now you're starting to see who made those adjustments during halftime. That Rams defense, a variety of looks up front, last-second shifts that's given those offensive linemen. That's tough. You go up there, you're making your reads, you're looking for your keys, and then those linemen shift at the last second. So then you have to have a plan in your head as to who you're going to block on that play because depending on where he's lined up, your rule or your assignment may change. So right now putting a lot of pressure on that offensive front for Cal PA, that Rams defense really making some, some – Good plays here in the second half. 
Third and five for Cal from the 30-yard line. Black looks to throw, throws it quickly, complete, but the receiver ran backwards. Hopkins went backwards, and they're going to throw a flag. McDowell brings him down, but this flag could be costly. Uh, They're saying forward progress on that? He went backwards anyway. That was quite a generous spot. But Pena's going over to the sideline signaling fourth down. Yeah, I just was going off of this initial spot here. It looks like a first. Wow. That was a very generous spot. I didn't see forward progress because I had thought that the receiver – Took himself Yes, back. he looked like he started to go back trying to get to the outside. But then you, you really can't deny the first down. So what are you going to do? This is weird. So they said the result of the play was a first down, so are they going to decline the face mask? They said it was no face mask. Oh, okay. Yeah, they picked up the flag for the face mask, and another official saw it differently. So first and ten for Cal. After the first down, completion to the 36. Black under some pressure, throwing deep down the far sideline. Adamas in coverage, and he knocks it away. Pass is probably heading out of bounds, it looked like anyway. Adamas is now slow to get up on the Shepherd sideline. Because it looks like when he came down. Willis, the intended receiver. Yeah, Willis's face mask went into his chest. Ouch. So, falling on the football can knock the wind out of you, but. Falling on a helmet, that might knock a little bit more out of you. I think he might be all right, though. He gets up, takes his helmet off, and we'll have second and ten now for Cal. Those deep shots have worked really well for them so far. Obviously, the screen pass going for 95 yards as well. That has been the Cal offense. When they've driven the ball downfield, they've fumbled or threw an interception. I mean, the, the big plays have been what's led to touchdowns for the most part here today. You do have a Boyd run from two yards out. Second and ten here from the 36. Black under some pressure, but throws a bullet over the middle to DeMonte Martin. Martin again, receiver kind of running backwards. Close to the sticks, though, anyway. Out to the 46. I believe that will be a first down, and they'll move those chains. These are some generous spots. That one was at the 46, I felt like, but you're right. I mean, these receivers are going backwards. You know, they're, they're, I don't know why they're not going upfield. Must be afraid of Amari Terry or something. <laughs> he has been flying around today. First and 10 from the 46, 45 seconds to go in this third quarter on a rolling clock, 30-28 Shepard. Black. Looks to the running game here with Williams across midfield. Pena comes up, makes the tackle. Down to about the 48-yard line. That time the Rams defense giving you more of a traditional look of that 3-3 stack. They used to run it years ago, and now they're able to do that now because it just gives you so many blitz packages, and they've been able to get some more pressure consistently here in the second half, but the Rams right now just making whatever adjustments they can to slow down this Vulcans offensive attack. We head to the fourth. Great game between Cal and Shepard. 30-28 our score as we head to the fourth quarter. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We are back in one minute. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Hi, Kresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. Back here to Cal, California, PA, as the fourth quarter begins here. 
on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. Our fourth quarter presented to you on TV10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 on Mississippi Drive. Call 304-263-3361. We got a second down and four for Cal, and they'll run it with Boyd, and he is tackled by Terry after a gain of about one. Maybe even lose the yard on the play as our other fourth quarter sponsor here is Dutch Miller Automotive Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. So it's third and five for the Vulcans after the loss of one. They'll spread them out with the three receivers set. Willis, of course, keep an eye on him. He's at the top of your screen. Martin is the receiver to the near side. Again, the Rams defense going to that 3-3 stack. Going with a more of an athletic look to try to open up that blitz package. Shepard brings the pressure again here on third down. Blass throws off his back foot, and Harrison right there. It's going to be ruled a catch. How is he that? Throws up a lollipop. And the wide receiver just has enough time to make the catch and bring it down. I don't know how there's that much space between what's going on in the box and then the secondary. I realize you have been torched all day today, but there should not be that much space for that wide receiver to come down with the ball. First and 10 from this 27. Harrison did a good job of recovering to potentially make it a close play, but they do rule the catch there on the backside. Cal driving here down by two. Davis Black looking to throw. Pumps once, throws to the near side and nearly intercepted by Naeem Alexander. Demonte Martin, the intended receiver. That one just hits the carpet as it falls incomplete. Second and 10 from the 27 of Shepard for the Vulcans. Good Good break on the ball from Alexander, Travis. And again, I mean, this Rams secondary, they've had a long day, but they are in prime position to be the heroes of today's game, but they're able to make a play here in the late goings, here in the fourth quarter, I should say. Pistol formation. They'll run it up the middle. Rams come up, make the tackle, short of the first down, six to X. Boyd on the carry. Like Cole Scott in on that tackle for Shepard. And the Vulcans are getting away from the formula. You were having success running the ball, but they've made the choice to stop running on first down and then running on second down. When you go out there and it's second and ten, the defense has essentially put you in handcuffs because now you have to run because I know you don't want to face third and ten. So the defense is going to bring that run blitz. You get a short gain on second down. Now you're in a third and long situation, and there's a lot of pressure on that offense, especially with all the variety of looks that the Rams have used here in the second half to create pressure. So not sure why the Vulcans are not relying more on their running back. Third and eight from the 25. Black and a look to run. Tuck it. Dive for the first down, and he's got it. Using that big 6'5 frame, stretching out to get the ball, get the ball across the line to gain. And a big first down for that Vulcans offense. Again, Davis Black has shown some mobility. He doesn't do it a lot, but he has shown he has enough athleticism to hurt you if you don't account for him on third and long. Yeah, and coming in at the right time to get that first down. First down and 10 from the 16. 12-15 to go in this third quarter, or fourth quarter now, excuse me. Shepard leading by two, and Cal already in field goal range, driving down the field to begin the fourth. They'll run it with Boyd off the right side. Good tackle in space for Shepard at the 10. O'Neal coming up and making the stop. And again, you run on first down, you get a good game. Now second down, now you have access to your whole playbook because now a second is short. You can take a shot to the end zone if you want to, or you can go right back to the ground and set yourself up for a third and short. Not sure why they got away from running the ball on first down, especially with the type of game that Boyd has been having. Willis and Hopkins to the far side. Martin, the receiver, to the near side. On second down and short, Boyd the back to his left, of to the left of Black. Black will hand it to Boyd. Boyd has a hole up the middle, and he is popped. Pena. On the six-yard line by Anilio Pena. Boyd again, the ball carrier. And now Boyd is slow to get up. 
and maybe that's why they haven't used him as much. That 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 is a quite a load to carry for a freshman coming in, getting that many carries. Looked like a hard hit there from Pena coming down, and you just hope that there wasn't contact to the head or neck area. And on a run play, I don't believe anybody's protected on that situation. So it's kind of a tough part of being a running back. Yeah, especially there in the middle of the field. I mean, even if it was, you're probably not going to get that call. But whether you get the call or not, that's not going to take the pain away of that collision. Hopefully Boyd able to come to his feet here. Looks like he is. and Yeah, that's good to see. He was drilled by Anilio Pena, one of those kind of safety linebacker hybrids that we see in the PSAC so often, Boyd walking off on his own power. And, and Pena is just, he's a hard-nosed defender. Like, can make plays in space as far as being a, as far as being in coverage, but really shines when he's up in the box making plays in the run game. And that time he just came up and was just bringing the wood on that play. He's one of those guys you can move all over the field and can do a lot of different things with Cal driving down to the Shepard seven-yard line. It's a third and one. They can get a first down without getting into the end zone. Williams, though, the back here on third down, and one kind of the smaller back when it comes between him and Boyd, and Black is going to burn a timeout here with 10.59 to go. Probably didn't just – I'm guessing they didn't like the look there from the defense. Uh, and the Rams came out. They made that shift for having three down linemen. Then they had the two walk-ups come up. And then the interior, then those linemen basically bumped down inside where you got your center and two guards covered. Coach didn't like the call. I was curious if they were going to run that play. It was earlier in the game where they ran that little zone read fake. And Davis Black kept the ball and ran an off tackle to pick up the third down conversion. It looked like that was going to be a similar type of play coming up right there. But, Again, not liking the look that they had on that play. They call a timeout. It's in the fourth quarter. This is an opportunity that you can't squander, so you don't want to burn a timeout too early, but that time I believe the timeout was warranted because you don't want to walk away empty-handed on this drive. Boyd going into the tent. Typically that means concussion protocol. i got to remember in the third quarter he took a hard shot from Amari Terry when we were having some uh, technical difficulties. So if you didn't get a chance to see it, Amari Terry – blasted him earlier in the third quarter, so we haven't seen him as much after that hit and then that that play down towards the goal line where Pena came up and laid the wood. So the freshman right now getting getting looked after, and we hope for a speedy recovery for that young man. But right now, Devontae Williams, the senior ball carrier, has checked into the game. But now they've made another switch. They're going to bring Isaiah Cameron into the game. See if the next man up mentality can pay off for the Vulcans. A little bit more of a bigger back here is... Everybody's stacked in here on the line. Black under center on third and one. This is going to be a push type play, I would imagine, and it is. Big surge up front. Oh, it might go. All the way down to about the two goes Davis Black. It's a first down and more for Cal. I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles have made that such a kind of a broken play in the game of football. I'm surprised that the NFL didn't do anything to change it, and now at obviously the college level we're seeing it trickle down. It's really more of a rugby play. I mean, obviously it's in the rule books. You're going to do it, but I'm surprised there wasn't a rule change after how effective Philly made it and now how effective you can do it at the college and high school level as well. So first and goal here, good play call there from Cal to get the first down. First and goal from the three. Williams is the back here. And there he is another timeout. That's costly. Now that's that, 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 that's a pricey timeout right there. First one, you can excuse that second one. First one might have just been, hey, let's get a different personnel out yeah. here and let's just do something smart and run that play. That one there, it's like you got to get the play clock. And you imagine that they probably even had a, two plays called there in that situation. I mean, maybe as if we get stopped, let's just do something else. But And it looked like Williams, the senior, was the player that was out of position because they shifted him over at the last second, and the quarterback didn't like what he saw, and he called another timeout. So a costly drive. The Vulcans at this point have to come away with a touchdown because – you burn two timeouts and you come away with a field goal, that's 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 not think. gonna feel great. No. Especially not. <laughs> with just over ten minutes to go, ten minutes, ten seconds, you never know. Shepard could burn that 
majority of that out and, and kick the lead field goal or score the lead touchdown in this two-point game. So anything can still happen in this one. 30-28, to 28, Shepard on top, 10-10 to go. Black is in the gun. It's Hopkins and Willis, the receivers. They'll fake it, and they'll run. Jack Baxter, though, sniffed it out and made the tackle. Vulcans ran a yard on the play. Vulcans ran a similar play like that in the first half where it was a third down. And Davis Black was able to pick up the first down. But like you mentioned, Baxter was ready for it. He just kind of jumped on the back of Black as we have a player down on the field on the near side. Let's go ahead and take a 30-second break for the injury. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in 30. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. California, Pennsylvania player injured on that one. Appears to be walking off on his own power. So, again, good to see. A little bit of a limp there for him for big number 84, Junior McConaughey. The backup tight end was in on that play. It is second and goal. No gain on that previous one. Down to the three-yard line. And Williams is the back. It looks like the same formation. Willis and Hopkins go to the far side. Tight end spread out to the near side along with DeMonte Martin. Kelechi, the tight end, he now goes goes in motion. They'll give William or play action, a great play action. Oh, no! Ball came he, out there at the last second. They're ruling it a touchdown uh, for Amari uh, uh, Hopkins. Uh, uh, it a, looks like Christian McDowell out. And he didn't complete the catch, but they're ruling as of now, and they're going to keep it a touchdown for Omari Hopkins, his second of the day, and Cal takes the lead at 34-30. That's a very close play there, Travis. That's tough. I'm looking at the replay now. Comes down with two feet, able to make a play, then yeah. I don't, I don't know. Didn't go all the way to the ground with it. I don't know. I, I don't think you can give him a touchdown on that. It's one of those 50-50s. They're going to go for two here, only up by four, trying to make it a six-point game. We've already seen a missed extra point, so I guess that's the logic here with the four-point lead. I mean, you might as well add some points to 34-30. Black looking to throw. Throws knocked up into the air. Should have picked it and ran it back. <laughs> Was that two. what they should have did? <laughs> <laughs> Went right to him. <laughs> Good defense that time. About the Rams able to break up the two-point conversion. <laughs> Knocked down by the Rams. 34-30. Our score, 9.33 to go. We will take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WR and RTV on YouTube. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. We welcome you back here to Cal. Our score, 34-30. California leading Shepard as they will kick it away with Betco. Cam Dorner's back there as well as Malachi Brown, I do believe. So danger on the field. Dorner and McDowell back yeah, deep for the McDowell Rams. Back there, so. It's hard to see when they got their jerseys all rolled up in their shoulder pads. Like The way to tell, Christian does have those kind of three-quarter sleeves on sometimes. I can't tell if he still has them on or not or if I'm just seeing like a reflection from the sun. But here's a squib kick. It ends up in the hands of McDowell. He's the one guy that hasn't returned one for a touchdown, so why not now? Well, it's still a good return. Out to about the 31-yard line. I don't know why he didn't just return it all the way. <laughs> yeah, he just could have just ended all the drama right there. Let's take it back for a touchdown. 
He did do a good job of fielding that one. Sometimes those squib kicks can bounce a little funny. He was able to get it on the big hop and catch it in stride and again set this Rams offense up with good field position. Seems like it's been a long time since this Rams offense has been out there on the field. Let's see if they've been able to stay warm and loose and in rhythm. First and 10 from the 33-yard line. Seth Morgan is alone in the backfield. Interesting. With 9.25 to go in this fourth quarter of play, now a man going in motion. That is Dorner. And they'll throw it underneath to Cam Dorner. This time, Cal does attack a little bit more than they have been, but still allow Dorner to get positive Dorner yardage. Now it's about the 37 yard line, about 38. Four. About a four yard pickup will be second down, be and second down and six. Again, the Rams just using plays like that one as an extension of the run game and kind of like a boxer uses a jab. You want to use it to set up something else. And that's what Dorner was able to score a touchdown on earlier because they were able to set him up with those short plays underneath. The defense overreacts, and then you're able to beat them deep with the pump fake. So, again, the Rams going back to the well once again. Brown in the backfield to the right of Morgan. Morgan throws a dart over the middle, and it could have been intercepted, but it was man-on-man crime. Dominic Suleiman had an interception, and the zone man hit him. Matt Toby flying over underneath, knocks the ball out of his hands. Can't blame him. He was looking to make a hit on the receiver. Luckily, he slowed up, I think, when he realized it was his own teammate. Or that could have been really bad, but instead it's just a pass broken up by Suleiman. Third down and six from the 37. A huge third down of 8.49 to go. Morgan sends Brown in motion. He'll throw it underneath. Malachi makes a man miss. Still on his feet. Brown has the first down and more into Cal territory. But there is a flag on the field back at the 30. Three and a half yard line. But I'm thinking that might be on the Vulcans defense, illegal hands to the face. But Malachi Brown out there just making plays in space. Miller coming. There we go. Travis, you have an eagle eye out there. Well, I saw. No, you just saw the you saw the illegal hands to the face. Just go with it. <laughs> just take the compliment. Huh? <laughs> So that penalty, not only does Shepard get the first down and more on the Brown run, but the penalty brings the ball all the way to the 26-yard line of Cal. Shepard deep into Vulcan territory now, 8.30 to go in this fourth quarter. Morgan throwing again. Seth dumps it down in the flat underneath to Jeremiah Taylor. He makes a man miss, lowers his shoulder, and has a first down, brought down inside the 15. And now the you're starting to slow to get up. Yeah, they, 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 you can see that defense, the fatigue starting to set in. They're not coming up as fast. They're not tackling as well, but yet those wide receivers remain elusive. So now you're starting to get yards after catch with those short passes underneath. Nice, safe throws for Seth Morgan in this game. And you got those type of athletes on the outside. Get them the ball. And let them make the magic happen. First and 10 from the 14, Gage Hill jogging off the field, 34-30. They'll run the ball with Nazir Russell. Russell down to about the 11-yard 11 11 line. Gain of about three on the play. will bring up second and seven Brilliant for the Rams. The 7.40 to go on a rolling clock. Four-point lead second for Cal. You need the touchdown seven. here to take the lead. As the Rams head back up to the line, Brown back in the backfield on second and seven from the 11. Barry Hill going in motion from left to right. Morgan will give it to Brown. Brown stutter steps in the hole, lowers his shoulder close to the stick, gonna be about a yard short down to the six. Brown doing a good job of holding on to the ball. The defender came up, did a good job of trying to put his hat on the football. But Malachi Brown showing good patience, read his blocks, ran to the open space, and most importantly, held onto the ball at the end of the play. Again, you come out second and seven, you can work with that. You come back, run the ball again. Now it's third and short. Very manageable situation for this Rams offense. Third and two from the six. Dorner in motion from right to left. Morgan to throw on third and two. 
Morgan to roll to the right. Morgan throws to the back of the end zone for Taylor. Touchdown, Shepard. Jeremiah Taylor holding in from six yards out. Seth Morgan making things happen in the backfield and finds Taylor for the touchdown. The Rams regain the lead at 36-34. The extra point running on. Again, Seth Morgan just, just shows he's very comfortable once he gets outside the pocket. He keeps his eyes downfield, and the wide receiver is doing a good job of running to space and giving their quarterback an open target. That time, Morgan able to connect with Taylor for the go-ahead touchdown here in the fourth quarter. Extra point is good from James Bozick. Shepard regains the lead at 37-34. He's still got 6.34 to go. This has been an absolute classic between Shepard and Cal, we will be back in 30 seconds. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Shepard regains the lead, 37-34, 6.34 to go in this fourth quarter. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. Dylan Bishop, our utility man, doing it all to my right. And up top on camera, Daryl Miller. 37-34, 37-34, score, of course, Colin McLaughlin. Shout out to Colin Willis on the kickoff return here, getting out to about the 24-yard line. That's where Cal will start. Colin McLaughlin back in the studio. Shout out to Colin, of course, for uh, getting us on the air today as we had some issues in the studio back home, and Colin figured it out, reset some things, and, and we're, we've are we been rolling since the early part of the game. Or so we got we got on before the game is what I meant. So yeah, we, we didn't get much of a pregame, but luckily we've been able to catch all the action during the game. Like we mentioned, like two elite fighters. There's us out there trading big punches. We'll see how this one turns out with the Vulcans having the ball in their hands with 6:27 left here in the game. So they had to burn those two timeouts to get that last touchdown. Let's see if that comes back to bite them here down the stretch. Shepard regains the lead at 37-34. Black throws complete. Willis underneath. Como Yao trying to chase him, and he does bring him down. Fumbles the ball out of bounds, but yep. are they going to give him the first down on that? I think he was close on the catch. I think he was. Yeah, they're going to still give it to him. It was very close. But on that previous drive, seven plays, 67 yards, 251 off the clock. For Shepard, Jeremiah Taylor scores the touchdown for the Rams. 37-34, our score. Yeah, I thought maybe it was about a yard short. That makes a little bit more sense as they'll bring it back. I knew he was close to the marker, but like you said, he did fumble forward, which I think is why they moved the chains initially, but now they adjust and it should be about third and one. And again, the ever-dangerous... Willis the third. Just it's a tough matchup because what do you do? I mean, you can't put a guy like right over top of him. You have to have a safety playing over the top. It's just you have to worry about him so much in a variety of ways. Just a complete wide receiver. He can beat you deep. He can beat you underneath. He's made plays over the middle. They do have the bigger Dante Harrison guarding the smaller Willis there. It's in second and two. For Cal, they'll run Williams. Williams finds a hole. Kowser comes up, makes the tackle, but it is a first down now for the Vulcans. Because earlier in the game, the Rams made the switch. They put Adamas over Willis, but I don't know if he's returned to the game after going out with an injury early on because he had good speed. When Willis broke that long 95 touchdown, 95 yard touchdown, Adamas was one of the few guys that was actually giving chase. He had the angle in that play, wasn't able to bring him down, but Probably one of the more speedier options in the secondary for the Rams defense. First down and 10 from the 35. Black has time looking deep for Willis again. Overthrown and it's tipped and intercepted by Dante Harrison. Harrison across the 30, still on his feet, gets a block. 
Harrison still going across midfield. Harrison has blockers in front, and he's finally out of bounds at around the 30-yard line. The deep ball doesn't work out for Cal. It gets tipped, and Dante Harrison comes up with a huge interception. We mentioned they had a long, rough day, but they still had that opportunity to come out as heroes, that Rams secondary. And Harrison, let's be honest, he was burnt on that play. If he wasn't able to catch that ball, if he was able to catch that ball cleanly, this thing is going the other way. But that time, Willis not able to bring it down cleanly, and Harrison, Harrison not giving up on the play. So you got to give him credit for that. Stayed after, able to run down the tip ball, and then come back with a big return after the interception. Ran out of gas there a little bit, but I'm sure the Rams coaches don't mind as he's able to make a big play, a much-needed play for that Rams defense, and now the Rams have a chance to improve their advantage with the ball in very good territory with 516 left and a three-point lead. Shepard coming off of that seven-play drive, 67 yards, 251 off the clock. Scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate. An effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Brown running off the right side, going forward, lowering his shoulder and still going down to the 25-yard line. Shepard looking to add to more to this lead, but also it's only five minutes to go in the game. You're trying to burn as much clock as possible. You're starting to see that Cal PA defense, they're starting to get a little bit tired here in the second half. You look at the Rams defensive unit, they've made adjustments, they've been able to make plays, but now Cal PA looking a little bit tired, and the Rams just going back to a, it's been a bread and butter play for them for many years, just that old pin and pull, running it off to the right side, just allowing your running back to find that open lane, put his foot in the ground to get north and south, and second up for a second and five for this Rams offense. Oh, got it! QB keeper on the read option play. That is a first down, Shepard. Down to the 20-yard line. And, and those chains. And, and that was an action that we saw last year with the Rams unit. Usually it was during garbage time when they when they started bringing in some of their backups. But that, uh, that run play option up the middle where they fake the dive, and the quarterback has the option to pull it. A lot of times it was Etchinson. He was the guy that was handing the ball off last year. This year it was Morgan. Seeing that read, how the defense crashed down inside, he pulled it, got out to the outside, picked up the first down. Every once in a while, there was a Tyson Bajant keeper. As I believe we have an encroachment call going against the defense. And you got Morgan was trying to take his Aaron Rodgers free play, but he won't be rewarded. <laughs> it. So, 3.48 to go in this fourth quarter, and what has been an absolutely great game between... Shepard and Cal, 34, or I'm sorry, 37-34, Shepard on top. And there's the offsides, not the encroachment. And you just see that this Cal PA defense, they're, they're just a tired unit right now. They're, you, they're making mistakes. They're missing tackles, jumping offsides. Just sometimes that fatigue gets to you, and you get a little sloppy down the stretch, and Cal PA needs that defensive unit to stiffen up here if they have a chance to get back into this ball game. As the day has gone on, the, obviously the day gets hotter, and, and, of course, the sun has emerged from the clouds a little bit more. It was kind of the, partly cloudy. Now it's pretty much clear skies. And they got those black jerseys on, so that's going to yeah. absorb a lot of heat. Malachi Brown dancing and getting inside the five, a first down, but a flag on the play. Maybe not the best day to wear the black jerseys, but they look tough. So yes, that, yes, they do. Holding will really hurt here, that one going against the Rams. But you're just seeing just that defense is just Chandler getting Brown. gashed up front. Chandler Brown, uh, he, he was owed a couple. <laughs> yeah, there was a couple that got missed early on in the game. The referees maybe maybe trying to bring a little bit of balance back here in the second half. He got away with a couple there early on on some pass play. So picks up one on that one, but you could just tell it was just a huge – Surge up front for that Rams offensive line, just really now beginning to impose their will. First and 15, 18 seconds on the play clock. Morgan in the shotgun first formation. Jeremiah Taylor, the receiver to the near side. Morgan throws that wide receiver screen, complete the Cam Dorner. Dorner gets it across down to about the 
17-yard line. Like to keep them in bounds there. And again, those were plays that the Rams weren't able to get in the first half. You can just tell the defense is just fatigued and the, the, the technique isn't quite what it once was early on in the game, and the Rams are able to make them pay. Again, the wide receivers for Shepard able to make plays over the top, underneath. They're good running after the catch, and Seth Morgan is right now is just dealing. Second and seven from the 17. Morgan throws to the back of the end zone for Taylor. Jump ball, and a flag comes flying in. That should be pass interference. A risky play there from Shepard to throw a jump ball in a game that you're leading by three with 2.28 to go. And it wasn't a very high jump ball. That was about chest level, like nobody needed to jump on that play. Second and seven from the 17. Stick with the run. The defense is tired. The offensive line is taken over. You want to keep that clock running. So that pass interference. Brings the ball to the two-yard line. That was that was just too much contact by the defensive back. They're going to let them play. They're going to let them get physical out there, but that was just too much. Like You can't impede the wide receiver's progress like that and, and not come away with Al getting a penalty. Loban, yes, he did get his head around, try to locate the ball, but it was just it was too much contact. Lobin, the man, called for the P.I. Dorner and Batten to the near side. They'll run Malachi Brown. No, it's the QB. Read option again. Morgan lowering his shoulder right at the goal line. They're going to say he is a yard shy of the end zone. And I, like I, the I don't like the aggressiveness, though. I, I, I like the aggressiveness, but I don't like the fact that he's trying to reach out over the goal line to get the ball. Keep that, that thing tucked away. We'll get it. you got two, three more downs to get the ball in the end zone if you want to. You don't need to risk it. This has been a crazy football game, and you certainly don't want to turn the ball over. That close to pay dirt. Tuck Clock that thing away. Under two minutes now. 150 to go in this one. Shepard, they already gave him the touchdown on the scoreboard, but it is 37-34 our score. Second down. They'll push Morgan in to the end zone. Waiting for the official single. There it is. Touchdown, Shepard. Uh, flag on the play. Things getting – well, they've already been chippy. It's a big game. I mean, both these teams know one or two losses and you're out of the PSAC championship. I mean, that's just how this conference is. So, And, and it's a tough draw for Cal PA because you don't play your first game of the season. Alderson brought us, folded up shop, so you don't get a chance to play. That game was canceled. Your first game of the season is against Cutstown. You have to have some dramatic comeback to win that one in the fourth quarter. And who you got next? You got Shepard coming to town next. They really didn't do him any favors with how the crossover schedule worked for Cal. Of course, they played the same schedule last year, and that's why this team, I think, ended up with you know three losses and, and yeah, they, it was they a went, quality team. Yeah, they went six and five. Okay, six and five last year, but yep, six and five overall, four and three in the conference. That's where the three losses were. The three in the conference is the extra point here from Bozick is good. So our score, Shepard 45, Cal 34, minute 38 to go. Rams punch it into the end zone. Let's go ahead and take a 30-second break. When we return, we will have the rest of this one, minute 38 to go. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. We are back here at Cal. Shepard has pulled away, 44-34 our score. The Rams will kick it away after another good touchdown drive for Shepard, resulting in six and coming after that Dante Harrison interception. The defense makes a play after a tipped ball. Cal's gonna look back on this one, Travis, and say, 
They let one get away. I mean, the turnovers. That That's really the big difference right now. As the Rams go in, five plays, 31 yards. Finish it with the Seth Morgan QB sneak for the touchdown. 44-34, our score on the penalty. The Rams will have to kick it off from their own 20. That scoring drive summary brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. This kickoff only goes to midfield. We have a flag coming in again. Everybody's throwing flags on that one. Referee's going to have to get iced down after this game. They've been very active. But a pooch kick just trying to get over that front line after being backed up due to the penalty on quarterback Seth Morgan. The Vulcans, heady play up front. A lot of times you don't want those guys up front trying to field the ball, but they are aware enough to call for the fair catch. They make the catch, but yet the Shepard Covers team still goes down there and makes the tackle. So possibly the Vulcans could be having excellent field position to start this drive. And with a minute 37, it's not over yet. Personal foul on the kicking team, number 30. That one going against the Rams. One thing you just have to take your hats off to this Shepherd Rams football team, they've done it with conditioning today. They've just been able to go harder and longer than Cal PA. You could tell that defense has wilted down the stretch. They've been shorthanded on offense, that is Cal PA, not having their primary running back, but Boyd was able to come in and play great football, but then he goes out with injury, and again, it's just you're lucky enough to have a player that can come in and fill in for a top-notch running back like McCann, but when he goes down, that's when you're asking a little bit too much of your third and fourth option at the running back position to come in and still try to make plays and be that big part of the running offense. Gianni Gamble was the man penalized on that kickoff for Shepard. So with a minute 37, the onside kick still a factor. You never know what can happen here. Davis Black rolling to the right, looking deep downfield, throwing, and nearly intercepted. I don't think he would have been able to get a feet, a foot in there for Christian McDowell, but Black with kind of a risky chuck. And for Hopkins. Fire finds incomplete. Rolling out to his right, not lacking for arm strength, and that ball sails on him. Second down and 10 here now from the 30, a minute 30 to go. So those two penalties setting up Cal with an opportunity. You never know, again, those timeouts they had to burn them in that third quarter are really big right now as well. Because if you had to kick it away, you could. Of course, they have to score first. There's a lot to still be decided here, but. Just thinking ahead a little bit. Davis Blank throws and nearly intercepted. Tipped up into the air and caught inside the 20-yard line. Hopkins again. That's good for a Vulcans. First Good thing here is the clock will run once Cal is set as he was tackled in the middle of the field. Minute 20 to go. As the clock still does stop inside of two minutes on first downs, we have another flag. My receiver did not get set. Prior to the snap. Amari Hopkins. They called it on the center. It wasn't on the center. It was on the wide receiver. He was late getting to the slot. And you can tell by where the coaches are yelling at. They're not yelling at the linemen. They got rung up for the penalty. They're yelling at the wide receiver for not getting set before the ball. First and 15. Official has to turn his mic off. Black throws complete to Hopkins. Coma Yow. I'm sorry. Martin on the catch. Coming out, tackles him at around the 13. Forty-four, thirty-four, one oh eight to go in this one. Second down and three. Second and three. Out of bounds, so the clock just now starting to roll. Black to the left. Rolls back, looks back to the right and throws incomplete. They're saying there is a receiver in the area in Martin, but really that was thrown right to the PSAC official on the near side, the ball boy. Kind of looked like ground in vain, but. They're going to be generous and give it to Martin was a couple yards deep in the back, in the end zone. I guess they're saying the contact affected the throw, which it did. Second down here, or it should be third down now, third down and short. Black in the gun, 
And the ball boy's asking, like, what do you want from me? I already got three or four balls over here already. And they asked me to catch passes. It was a good catch. It was. It was one-handed. Give that ball boy a contract. <laughs> Third down here. And three from the 13. They'll run it. And Shepard is all over it. Jack Baxter again coming through the line to make the play. Cameron, the ball carrier. Almost looked like and a miscommunication. Yeah, well. it, was, it was almost like a direct snap to the running back on that one. The quarterback really didn't even have a chance to get his hands on the football. And again, now you're getting down your third and fourth option in the backfield, so you're not going to have you're not going to be able to trust him with everything that you're going to ask out of your starters. So it's going to be a very limited part of the playbook where he's going to be able to step in and be able to help you out. But right now the Vulcans are looking to go game management style. They're just going to kick this field goal and try to get this onside kick if the field goal is successful. But now burning those two timeouts, now that's really starting to burn you. 44-34, 57 seconds left. Vulcans have to burn that last timeout. And they're going to go for the field goal. So they're going for the field goal at this point, then trying to get the onside kick and the touchdown so you save as much time as possible with 57 seconds left. This will be about a 30-yarder for Cal. From the middle of the field at the 20-yard line is where their holder is lined up. Right now, it looks like Coach McCook is working the referees. Juan Vera will snap. Clayton Rosensteel will hold. And Anthony Betko will kick this 30-yard field goal to make it a seven-point game with 57 seconds left. Not certain what McCook wanted on that one, but Beatko to attempt the three points. We'll see this extra point or this field goal, excuse me, from Beatko from 30 yards. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and no good. And that will seal the deal. Shepard takes over on downs on the missed field goal, and the Rams holding on now to a 44-34 lead with 53 seconds left. Cal has no timeouts. Shepard can just kneel it and get out of here with a win, Travis. What an exciting ball game. Just a back-and-forth game and just – the way Shepard was just able to impose their will down the stretch, you have to be happy with what this Rams group has been able to do this season. And a couple of tight games against opponents that people say, well, the Rams should have beat them. Maybe the game shouldn't have been that close. But a win is a win is a win. Then you come into a hostile environment here at Cal PA, one of the better programs in the PSAC. You come in, you're down early, but again, you're able to show that resiliency. You're able to fight through adversity and come out and really make some plays. And again, week after week, you're starting to see more and more of an identity emerge with this Rams unit and being able to collect a big win like this, knowing that you got cuts down coming up soon. Very big. Yeah, very very big step in the right direction for this Rams unit. The Rams will go the kneel down. And get this win here over Cal, 44-34. And you mentioned, Travis, you know, those games that people maybe look at them and they go, well, Shepard should dominate these teams. One thing I always kind of think, nobody's bad week one and week two. It's a brand-new yeah. season. You never know how good a team is going to be. I know their programs may not be traditional powerhouses like Cal and Shepard, but it's week one, week two. It's kind of hard to really say this is a bad football team or this is a great football team because the season hasn't been played yet. As Shepard takes that final kneel, the Rams get the win, 44-34 over Cal. We will await Dylan Bishop with Coach McCook before we roll into our postgame break. But, Travis, again, the Rams going on the road, getting another tough win. This team has been built to win these close games. They find a way. It seems like every time, and of course, Kutztown next week, we know how great those games have been. So it should be another great one. And hopefully Shepard can end the streak of the road team winning in that rivalry. And coming into the season, a lot of questions around this Rams football team because you lose so much firepower like that, everybody's going to be curious who's going to be able to step into the breach and fill that void. And the one thing that the Rams have shown you early on is one, they're able to fight through adversity, 
and two, they're able to pull out tough, hard-fought games. So if you've got a lot of questions, those are two pretty good answers to have in your back pocket moving forward in, into the meat of your schedule. So this Rams team has certainly risen to the occasion, and the way that they were able to do it today by just wearing out their opponent and really just imposing their will down the stretch and opening up a lead there to end the game against a tough, quality opponent in their own house. Hats off to this Rams program. And I, I look forward to seeing good things coming out of this Cal PA team. They've already got a big win over Cutstown. They, they fought hard today versus Shepard, just came up a little bit short. They were shorthanded in the backfield. That's a big part of their game. Yet they were still able to make an, uh, plenty of plays during the course of the game. Just Rams able to make more plays. And Cameron Dorner showing up big time for the Rams. Yeah, Cam Dorner definitely another huge game for Shepard. He has a kickoff return for a touchdown. He, of course, had a uh, two touchdowns receiving, so big game from Dorner. And another thing that's notable, we didn't mention it so far in the broadcast, not necessarily completely related to Shepherd football, but Shepherd Athletics, as I see Athletic Director Chauncey Winbush taking this one in, serving as Athletic Director for just a few more days as he will be stepping down to take a new position at – Miami University in Ohio, the Red Hawks will be getting a great accent in Chauncey Winbush as we know what he's done for Shepherd Athletics and what he's done for us as well, just helping us out whenever we need things at Shepherd home games. So certainly appreciate Chauncey and we'll miss him and we'll still have him around for a couple more weeks, but just seeing him out there reminded me of that, Travis. Uh, you know, the guy that's been all around for a long time, played for the Rams in the 90s. Coach Cater's actually coming back to fill the interim role. So there you go. You go from one uh, Rams Hall of Famer to another Rams Hall of Famer. So you're in, you're in good hands moving forward. Coach Cater's a college football Hall of Famer. Please refer <laughs> by his part of title, Travis, from here on out. So it looks like uh, Dylan may have a little bit of a delay in getting Coach McCook, but I don't want to go to break yet because I don't know how long that delay will be. And, of course, Coach McCook's a busy man. He's got to get back to Shepherdstown like we got to get back as well to Martinsburg. So we'll just kind of – Continue to talk about this one as Shepard getting the win, 44-34. Rams victorious here. We have a little bit of time, though, I would believe. Uh, let's go ahead and take a minute here, minute break, Colin, and then when we come back, hopefully Coach McCook has wrapped it up and we will be joined by him in about 60 seconds. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome you back to California, Pennsylvania, as the Rams again getting the win, 44-34, Travis over the California Vulcans. We now get into our post-game show brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Visit a, with a full lunch and dinner menu with daily specials and a clean, comfortable atmosphere. Check out the menu on the Palace Lounge Facebook page as they – are breaking the huddle, so we'll be joined by Coach McCook here shortly. Travis moving forward again. Shepard will take on Kutztown. Always an exciting matchup. Looks like Coach McCook is making his way toward Dillon. But just an excellent game. I mean, Cal's obviously going to look back and, and be frustrated with those turnovers because they had two drives that were inside the 30, had a fumble and an interception. And then they had the interception at the end, which was kind of a kind of a lucky play for Shepard. It ends up bounced up, tipped up in the air. Tough, 
Tough play for Willis. Not a great throw from Black, but it looks like Dylan is now joined. Because Willis was open. He, he had him burned. By Coach McCook. And Dylan, take it away. for the last six years has been we're going to play all 60 minutes. We don't look at the scoreboard. Don't look at the clock. We're just going to keep playing, and that's what we did. We came up with big plays on defense when we needed to. Um, offensively, we had a great day, I feel, you know, but we'll look at the tape. We're going to enjoy this win for the next 12 hours, and we'll come into work tomorrow, make our corrections, and start preparing for Kutztown next week. Just as it stands right now, before you are able to look at the tape, what do you think are the things that you still need to improve on? Well, I think we got to execute. You know, I, I know our defense coaches want to get more takeaways. Um, I know we want to be able to stop the run on defense. Offensively, I want us to be able to establish a run. I want us to be able to control it. And I, and I really feel like we're not fundamentally where we need to be to be a great football team, and that's what we need to work on. All right, Coach, congrats on the win. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Coach McCook, as well as you kind of got his thoughts on it. Let's go ahead and take – a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we will continue on the post-game show. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in two minutes. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. It's the post-game show. As we recap the scoring, bring you stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team. We welcome you back here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We are here on the post-game show. Again, brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edwin Miller Boulevard with a full lunch and dinner menu with daily specials and a clean, comfortable atmosphere. Check out the menu on the Palace Lounge Facebook page. Let's get you your post-game stats. Brought to you by Bechtel Jewelers, West Virginia's largest Pandora retailer on Route 11 South Inwood, taking care of you like nobody's business. We'll start. But the Rams, the victorious Shepherd Rams, 44-34, your final score. As Malachi Brown, 13 carries for him, 61 yards rushing, 4.7 yards a carry. His loan was a 15. Seth Morgan runs it three times for eight yards and a touchdown. The typical QB sneak numbers on the day for him. Nazir Russell, four carries for six yards. And then for Morgan passing, really good. 26 of 33, 326 yards and four scores. Cam Dorner has an electrifying game again. Nine catches, 124 yards and two touchdowns. Jeremiah Taylor has a nice day. Seven catches, 67 yards and a score. Cordell Batten, three catches for 43 yards and a touchdown. So Shepard getting some good performances. Those were the leading receivers. Malachi Brown also four catches 
for 48 yards. And defensively for the Rams, Anilio Pena and Christian McDowell leads the team in tackles with eight apiece. Travis, it seems like Dorner and Taylor, that combo is going to be really good for Shepard. Both of those guys, those taller receivers uh, that they can get into the mix, and it was good to see them step up for this team today. And they're able to do it in a variety of ways. They're good route runners down the field, but they're also able to take those quick underneath routes, break a tackle, and pick up yards after the catch. So just complete wide receiver play from both of those guys, and this is the first game this season where both of them seem to be hitting on all cylinders in the same game. Defender on the opposite side for Cal PA, Bobby Boyd Jr., 21 carries, 97 yards and a score. Davis Black, 6 carries, 43 yards. And Isaiah Cameron, 2 carries for 11 yards. Devontae Williams, 5 carries for 8 yards. Black goes 19 of 31, 4 touchdowns, 411 yards passing and 2 interceptions. 7 catches for Amari Hopkins, 73 yards, 2 scores. Eric Willis has a huge day. This might be a record day for Cal. Six catches, 274 yards, and two scores. That was impressive. (laughs) Five catches for DeMonte Martin, 56 yards. And defensively for the Vulcans, Rashawn Murray, eight tackles. John Hutchinson, eight tackles as well. Let's take another two-minute break or whatever we need, Colin. And when we come back, we will have the post-game awards. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. Have you been smoking? Uh... I can smell it. Hickory. I'm gonna watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. Have you been smoking? Uh... I can smell it. Hickory. I'm going to watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. All right, we welcome you back here to California. Let's wrap things up here on the post-game show. Travis, you ready for your awards portion of the post-game? Let's start with the electrifying play of the game brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, not just an appliance store any longer. They're located at 360 Hack Wilson Way in Martinsburg or online at Orsini's.com. Travis, what do you got? Well, for electrifying play of the, the game, whole game right? the whole game, I, it's <laughs> tough. There's quite a few to choose from, but I got to go with the 95-yard touchdown catch by number 12, Eric Willis. Just had an awesome game in the third quarter with 7.09 left. You take that little tunnel screen, 95 yards, and just able to turn on the Jets and extend it the entire way. That's my electrifying play of the game. Seems like a good choice to me. What about your collision of the game brought to you by Cody's Auto Body at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, family-owned, offering superior customer service and great pricing for a job done by experienced certified technicians. Call 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. 
Initially, I was going to give it to Boyd with the stiff arm early on in the game, but a little bit later on, I had to change my mind. I'm going to give the collision of the game to Amari Terry in the third quarter. I believe we might have been at commercial during that time, but he laid the wood on Boyd that time. So he got his revenge after getting stiff arm earlier in the game. So my collision of the game is going to go to Amari Terry there in the third quarter where he lowered the boom on the young running back. Yeah, I didn't see that one because I was trying to fix our issue, but um, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Trust me, it, it, it was a hit. <laughs> our good hands catch of the game brought to you by Kelly Allstate Insurance. For all of your insurance needs, call Gary Kelly at 304-263-4596 or stop by 724 Lakeview Drive in Martinsburg. What do you got, Travis? Catch of the game. I'm going back to Eric Willis again in the second quarter with 11:31 left in the second quarter. 91-yard TD catch by Willis. Again, just had a whale of a day. You can't talk enough about the good things that he was able to do. Six catches, 274 yards, two of those TDs, both of those TDs, 90-plus yards. I got to give him his love because I can't give him the big prize at the end, so I'm going to give him a shout-out as much as I can until I get to that point. Honestly, what was possibly the better catch might have been the one where it wasn't a touchdown, but he came back, made that heck of a catch on this side of the field. Yeah, I mean, that was like 56 yards yeah. on that one. It wasn't one. a touchdown, but it was a great catch. <laughs> yeah, tremendous Finally, player of the game. This is pretty easy, I feel like. There we go. I've kind of set it up right there, so you should know. Cameron Dorner, i got to give it to him. Nine catches today, 124 yards, two touchdowns, and not only that, he's able to add a 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And just the way he was able to answer, because that was after the big 95-yard touchdown pass to Willis, and then Dorner's able to come back, and he basically – takes over the game at that point because he's able to get a big touchdown catch himself, and then he's able to get a big kickoff return for a touchdown. So i got to give it to Dorner. Like his touchdowns were just a huge impact, three touchdowns to two touchdowns. That's my logic, and I'm sticking with it. The special teams might be the difference between 3-0 and and 0-3 this season. Absolutely. I mean, it's been that good this year, and those returns have been huge. Shepard gets the win again, 44-34. That is your final score. For Daryl Miller, our cameraman, Dylan Bishop, our do-it-all man, Travis Smith, my color analyst, back in the studio, Colin McLaughlin, who you'll hear from in just a few minutes. I'm Nick Verzellini saying so long here from California, Pennsylvania. We are back next Saturday. More Shepherd Rams football at home are the Rams against Kutztown. It's a noon kickoff, 11.30 a.m. pregame show. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. We're the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it. It can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We want to get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, Give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? 
I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Welcome into the post game scoreboard show here on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube as the Shepherd Rams get the win over Cal U by a final score of 44 to 34 as the Rams now 3 and 0 on the season California University of Pennsylvania falls to 1 and 1 a hard fought road win for the Rams again this year as they now Get ready for next week back at home against Cutstown. Speaking of Cutstown, they had a dominating win, 47-14 today over Mercyhurst. Some other final scores for you. 38-31 final score, Westchester gets the win over Gannon. Let's see if this one's gone final or not yet. It's a close one between Clarion and and Lockhaven, that 20-14 to 14 Clarion in the lead with a minute 34 to go, it says, in the fourth quarter. So I'll try to see if I can swing back around or not to that one when it gets final. But third quarter, 7.50 remaining. It's a blowout. East Stroudsburg dominating Seton Hill, 55-14 to 14 is the score in that East Stroudsburg all over them at the or excuse me, started the second quarter at Shippensburg 7, IUP 7. Have not got any update from that one. Halftime, Edinburgh 10, Bloomsburg 7 is the score. And then at 6 o'clock tonight, it is number 13, Slippery Rock, hosting Millersville. Let's see if we can get a quick update or not on the Clarion game. If it's went final or not, it looks like it has not yet. So 20 to 14. Clarion clinging on against Lockhaven. On to NCAA Division I scores now. You have number three, Florida State, only up by two on the road against Boston College. Boston College with the ball with 437 to go in the fourth quarter. 904 remaining in the fourth. It's number seven, Penn State 30, Illinois 7. And it looks like we might have overtime potentially between Missouri. And number 15, Kansas State, that tied at 27 seconds with three seconds left. At halftime, it is number 12, Utah 17, Weber State 7. Number 9, Notre Dame leads Central Michigan 21-7 in the second. Then at 3.30, you'll have South Carolina kicking off against Georgia. Western Michigan and Iowa kicking off as well now. Number 10, Alabama and South Florida doing so. Number 16, Oregon State and San Diego State. Number 19, Oklahoma against Tulsa, Minnesota against number 20, North Carolina, Northwestern against number 21, Duke. Then at 4 o'clock, Western Kentucky at number 6, Ohio State. At 5 o'clock, number 8, Washington against Michigan State, Northern Colorado at number 23, Washington State, North Carolina Central against number 24, UCLA. Then at 7 o'clock, number 7, or excuse me, number 11, Tennessee at Florida, Tennessee favored in that one. 7.30, Bowling Green at number two, Michigan. Georgia Tech at number 17, Ole Miss. Wyoming at number four, Texas. 8 p.m. kickoff for that. Number 13, Oregon against Hawaii also at 8 o'clock. Then at 10 o'clock, you have number 18, Colorado taking on Colorado State. One game already final, number 14, LSU beat Mississippi State 41 to 14. So there you go. Those are your scores. Tune in. At 7.30 kickoff, 4.30 pregame coverage on Talk Radio WRNR. So in an hour for the backyard brawl between WVU and Pitt. Again, your final score, Shepard 44, Cal U 34. As the Rams get the win, your other scores in the PSAC one last time. Cuts down 47, Mercyhurst 14, Westchester 38, Gannon 31, Clarion 20, Lockhaven 14, and then a little bit more, East Stroudsburg 55, Seton Hill 14, IUP and Shippensburg tied at 7, Edinburgh 10, Bloomsburg 7, then Slippery Rock and Millersville kicks off later tonight. That wraps things up here. This has been Shepherd Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube.
You've been watching play-by-play -play coverage of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd University Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's telecast has been brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Mary's Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremations, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm. TV 10 Sports thanks you for watching today's presentation of Shepherd Rams Football. All rights reserved.